So last week in Iron Fang Invasion, in the Reliquary of Ascension, you all continued through the Dwarven architecture here after waking up, spending the night resting. And it uh, didn't take you very long until you got to a sort of a gruesome scene with a petrified leg and some human faces, which were later clarified to be actual flesh faces rather than what people assumed they to be. Yeah, stone because of all the other statues. Yeah, yeah, nope, they were they were nice and nice and fresh. You then move forward. Uh, the next room wasn't really terribly interesting. There were a couple uh, alcoves and whatnot, and you checked those out and kind of summoned, well, summoned, triggered two golems, but it seemed like your rings were going to keep you safe, so it was kind of a non-issue. But in the very next room after that, you encountered some strange looking gugs with a, a weird black aura around them which you later identified to be a, a fiendish aura uh, because the next creature that you fought the purple worm also had a fiendish aura to it which kind of made fighting them a bit harder you had to figure out what their resistances were you knew that they had some sort of dr but end of the day you guys were able to dispatch all of those foes uh, without too much issues i i think and then you made it to a shrine that had been consecrated to a dwarven goddess. And while you were in that room, it felt very safe, very calming. It had a very, uh, I would say the, the sense that you would have gotten would be like, it, it almost felt like a second home type of a thing. Just very, very much at ease, which was immediately broken as soon as you opened the door and saw a Gug statue uh, and then a ghostly gug come out of that statue, do its own frightful, fight, frightful wail, which dispersed you all. Though Kieran was able to uh, chase after Gideon and teleport away before he, you know, ran too far ahead on his own. So, Jason, that's a good question, though. Is with the panicked when they ran through that room, shouldn't the panicked feeling have gone away because they would have felt at ease and calm going into that room? Uh, the room doesn't have any sort of like it doesn't have like a magical effect where it, it gets rid of mind affecting things. It's just like it's, it a, it's a subtle undertone of like feeling safe. But like if you are magically manipulated, it's it's not it's not that powerful. It felt nice, but there was no, like, boon or reward yeah. either, he was saying. You guys then, I think you dimension doored past the statue, right? Is that what you decided to do? Rather than risk yes, it? Yes, we did. Again? Right. Yep. You dimension doored further down the hallway to another chamber, which you opened and found it to be the dwelling place of the first king of Kragadan, who is now apparently uh, a mist in a jar type of strange situation. But unfortunately, uh, the the diplomatic relations there didn't go in your favor, so uh, you didn't get too much details about how that happened or anything like that. He kind of asked a little bit about what you guys were doing there and then kind of stopped talking. But there was no hostility, so you just kind of decided to cut your losses and continue moving forward even more at this point getting to probably a solid 50 percent of the map revealed here i'd say something like that maybe a little more than 50 percent quite a lot of the uh reliquary has been discovered here you're starting to get back on the the next turn here heading back in the direction that you started but uh as you got to that next offshoot you saw the remains of a battle with some dead gugs and a weird statue in the middle of the room. You walked up a little closer to figure out what this statue was. It wasn't it wasn't like a stone statue, like a petrified creature. It seemed like it was made of metal. And as you got a little closer to inspect it and make a knowledge check on it and discover that it was indeed a an outsider known as a forge fiend, or also known as a scander egg, it was about at that point that you heard a spell being cast in the darkness ahead, and I actually measured this just to make sure. Um, the only one of you who could have seen the creature would be Orin, and it would be at the very edge of his dark vision as it just peeked out from the stone itself and cast a spell 
and then the stone statue detonated. And that is where we left off last session. Right. And if I remember correctly, Gideon was over there. No. We had talked, we had talked about that at the end. Uh, yeah, no, we, we, Gideon has some memory issues. Well, Brandon and I were talking, and Kieran had definitely cast Resist Energy Communal for fire this morning. So Yeah, I remember you were saying that. Hey, as yeah. we keep yeah. marching forward, we should probably resist fire energy. And I was like, great idea, Kieran. <laughs> Way to be prepared. Wonderful. I just had this feeling that that would be a good thing to do in the morning. And I, I always trust Kieran's gut feelings, because they're, they're normally not wrong. So... Yeah, yeah, I don't think I recall any of that happening. You know, see, three against one. It's would've so been nice. funny. Would have been nice, but uh, that's too bad. Um, I will need everybody to roll initiative, though. Reflex we saves? This. Uh, we, we will get to that. I'm just, I'm going to get initiative first to see the order of events here. Mainly, I just wanted to see uh, if Oren would roll a higher initiative than this creature did, but uh, he did not, so. Well, that was unlikely. I was going to say, if you rolled a higher initiative than that creature, then uh, I might actually give you a, a chance to act before this occurs, because you're the only one who would have been able to see it. Because your guys' dark vision is normal range, yes? Yes. Yeah. Also, we need to stop and commemorate this moment where Gideon beat Kieran on initiative. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that doesn't, doesn't happen, happen often. <laughs> no, yeah. no, it doesn't, but today he's prepared. <laughs> it's because he was actually over here. That's why... He- <laughs> That's why he was so ready oh, yeah. to go. I do have heightened awareness. Brandon just put in chat that he expended his. I have not expended mine. I will keep mine on because I didn't think about it. Okay. But then I would have beat you. So, yes. So, initiative has been recorded here. 17 for Oren, 21 for Gideon, uh, 20 for Kieran, and 29 for Jessup. So, I have everybody's initiative order placed. Uh, so, in the first round of combat, we have the, the surprise round that would have allow i guess Oren can act in the surprise round if he wants to but the forge fiends will act first and uh in this surprise round it is going to again it's going to cast its shatter spell on the statue which will trigger the trap so i need everybody to roll a reflex save oh there it is it's a trap you know i'm not upset with that for Oren. 25 ain't bad for Oren. Oof, yeah, <laughs> i'm pretty sure I'm mine's gonna fail i'm upset with my natural five for a 15 Yes. Yeah, natural the, six for a 17. Yeah. The 15 and the 17 will fail, but uh, the 25 and 30 will pass. Oh, good for them. It's because Orin <laughs> saw him. because he saw him. He knew what was up. And um, is shield other still in effect? Uh, yes. Okay. I don't know why it wouldn't be. So in that case, uh, let me just go through this. Jessup, you will take 30 points of fire damage. Hmm. Orin, Ouch. you will Holy take cow. 15 points of fire damage. Okay. Karen, you will take 60 points of fire damage. <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> and uh, and uh, Gideon, you will take 75 points of yep. fire damage. <laughs> yep. Isn't that like all of your HP? No. It's a majority of my HP. <laughs> <laughs> we are not starting off well. You better get rolling those 3d8s, bro. <laughs> Wonder what I'm going to do with my surprise round. Right? <laughs> <laughs> surprise. Yeah. yeah. Wonder what I'm going to do. The equivalent of a maximized fireball spell. Yeah, I noticed that I had a little extra punch there when the people that passed, you go 30. I was like, oh, dear God. <laughs> Be happy Orin passed his. That's all I'm going to say. Be well, happy he passed. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that would be rough. <laughs> <laughs> 90 I, points. I, all I gotta say is be happy you got shield other, bro. You, you're True. the real tank now. True. I'm the tank now. Look at me. So, Look at me. Yeah, <laughs> next in the surprise round would be Orin. You did roll higher than the second one, so I mean I'll probably attack, right guys? Yeah, I, I think we're all we're all doing fine. Charge ahead. <laughs> I don't want to play your character, but I just think you should look at your sheet and consider all of your options before you commit to a decision. Oh, that that's juicy. I appreciate that. Thank you. That's a really yeah. good choice. I know that one. Yeah. yeah, channel. Yeah, 31. Suddenly, the drugs come back to life. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, for being... Sh- oh, oh, God. Wait, no, I can exclude them. We're fine. <laughs> Yep, so you go ahead and channel energy. So that is your action for the surprise round. Everybody goes up 31 hit points. So that brings yeah, Jessup. Not a bad. 
not a bad roll. I think roll that back up to good. The yeah. other two are yeah. still hurt, but yeah, but pretty decent. Hurt. Offsets a, a good amount of that trap's damage at least. Yeah. End of the surprise round. The next Forge Fiend is going to go, and it is going to cast a spell <laughs> behind all of you. Maximized fireball. <laughs> Maximized fireball. <laughs> <laughs> you all hear some spell casting, and then suddenly from behind you is sprung a wall of fire. Ooh. Nice. Okay. Love it. So let me draw that. Kieran! It wasn't me oh, this yeah. time. <laughs> Kieran with the staff. So, Wall of Fire is, uh, it's an immobile blazing curtain. One side uh, sends forth waves of heat, so it's going to be the side that is facing you guys. Dealing 2d4 points of fire damage to creatures within 10 feet and 1d4 points to those within 20, but more than 10. And I think that's the only damage. You only take more damage if you go through it. So, I think it's just going to be for Gideon and Kieran... It's going to be four points of fire damage. And then for the other two of you, one, one point of fire damage. Unacceptable. So not a whole lot, but there is now a wall of fire. No, no, we don't. Split that. <laughs> we split that. You take a half a point. I take a half a point. No, you, you, take, you take one. <laughs> yeah, there is now a wall of fire cutting off your retreat. That is the surprise round. At the top of round one, we come to Jessup. I figured we were going to take a stupid amount of damage. And I told Sarah today that I wanted to, as sincerely as possible, say that I wanted to start casting my soothing performance and see what Jason's face looked like. But I am not <laughs> going to. <laughs> that takes four that rounds. Probably be, uh, that's five. It's five rounds with pure concentration. <laughs> By the time it, it cuts off, though, we're all dead. So it's like you're healing our corpses. All right, so... I can't see them, can I? Or you can I now with the wall of see. fire? I don't think you can see no, because they're sixty-five and seventy feet. If if you five foot step, you'd see the one. But uh, and so the the wall of fire only does the initial damage when it's cast, and then now only if we pass it, correct? Uh, so it will do one d four or two d four damage every round that you are within proximity of it. But the two d six plus whatever damage it usually does is when you pass through it. So. Okay, so I, I will say that, you know, we've we've gone back and forth on exactly what a spell's physical manifestation is. I'll say maybe you saw like little sparks coming from the direction of both of them when they were casting their fire spells or their fire spell and shatter. So maybe like, you know, the general proximity, but you cannot currently see their position because they're in darkness. Okay, well, I will not metagame um, and I will standard action cast dancing lights over yonder then. So I okay. guess I'll do it out of my range of the dark vision. So as yeah. far as I can see, then I'll cast that exactly the next five foot increment right outside of it. And I'll just do it kind of right in front of me. So I guess yep. what 60 feet of dark vision. Uh, yeah. So that, that easily illuminates. The so it's whole basically whole like thing. right next to the, yeah. So it'll be yep. like right in here or whatever. Yep. Everything is pretty much perfectly lit now. Yep. Okay. So then I will, did, we didn't monster lure these, did we, on the corpse, I don't think? You did monster lure this creature, and that's what you identified as a forge fiend. I don't think you got any information about it, though. I don't think so, either. So, uh, swift action, start, inspire, courage. Just a look. Ah, looks like we're between two forge fiends and a firewall. Actually move up a bit to get out of range of the firewall. And... I guess that's it. So I'll just move 10 feet. Standard action, cast spell, swift action, start my performance. When I move, I'll draw my bow. That's it. That brings us to the the Red Forge Fiend here. It is going to five foot step forward a little bit, and it is going to cast a spell in this area. And the spell that it casts will immediately dispel your dancing lights. Uh, yeah, so you identify oh, it as I... a deeper darkness spell. Okay. Oh, no, I can't see. So it is the Deeper Darkness spell, which immediately dispels your dancing lights and then increases the darkness level even further to the point where I think it's... I think you guys can't see anymore. Hi, we're shrimped and we're here. Yeah, bright light becomes dim light, normal light becomes darkness, areas of dim light and darkness become supernaturally dark. This functions like darkness, but even creatures with dark vision cannot see within the spell's confines. So 
The creature steps forward, casts this spell, and suddenly the area is now supernaturally dark, which is odd for probably Orin, especially who is used to having natural dark vision. Even you now cannot see anything in front of your face. You can't see the hands in front of your face, anything. It's perfectly dark. That'll be its turn. Which brings us to Gideon. It's good, is it? Uh, because it's pitch black. Can, can we, in theory, like, is... Can we not even see the fire behind us? Yeah, it, it, it cuts out all light. Nice. Oh, crap! Oh, great. Now I really feel like I can roleplay this scenario. For that big of a freaking area? Really? So for our viewers at home, you are seeing what we are seeing. Yeah, Goodness. which is nothing. Nothing. <laughs> it's literally just pitch black. Although, to be fair, I should be able to have a better vision than anybody else. In pitch black? Yeah, I have blind sight. Blind sight. Yeah. Oh. Blind sense. I'm sorry. Blind sense. So I, I can at least see, like, I can actually sense where people are. Yeah, what square they're in. Yeah, and, and Justin, it is a 60 foot radius. So that is easily everything in every direction. Goodness. <laughs> so you guys can feel the heat behind you, but you see nothing. So what would you like to do, Gideon? You can describe your actions if you want to move, and I can uh, tell you, because I can see, so. Yeah, there are rules <clears throat> for stumbling in the dark. I don't know what they are. And he's going to go ahead and uh, do um, some divine touch and just heal himself up a bit. Yeah, so it's effectively you're blinded, so you have the, you're, you take those conditions, so a penalty to your armor class and such. Uh, you can make a DC 10 acrobatics check to move faster than half speed. No, I don't need if to. If you move fail, faster. you go you go prone. Um, he doesn't even want to go that far. He wants to go maybe five or ten feet, just so he's out of the like. As soon as he would not be feeling the heat of damage, like okay. So you move uh, a little bit forward. You move five feet forward. Uh, you move. You go to move another five feet forward, and I guess you can occupy that square. It is the statue square, so you'd bump into the statue. Or the remnants of it, because it blew up, right? That is true, yeah. I can I can just remove that from the map, because it is shrapnel. It is shattered. But I feel like you he's probably like, walking over like rock and jagged right. stuff. Yeah. So you move 10 feet forward. Um, you would still feel the heat of the wall behind you. It's just fainter now. Can you move 15 feet while only moving half speed? No, so we'll, or, just, leave it, okay. we'll just leave it there. Yeah, so you'd be within the 1d4 range, but otherwise, okay. yeah. yeah. Oh, this is so bad. Let's, um... Oh, I can't I can't see. I don't even know what he would do. I think maybe he would just try to cast some more healing on himself to get up as high as, high as he can. What would a cure critical do? 48 plus 13? Oh, that's so much. Let's go with a cure moderate. So then I'll just cast another heal spell on himself. 24 and uh, that's his turn and he'll shout out like you know can't see can somebody leave me not blinded <laughs> yeah I believe it was Kieran's turn so Kieran can't see anything but he has blind sense so he can sense those around him I think it's 30 feet I believe so yes 30 feet so I would like, if I can, to try to dispel the deeper darkness. May I try to do that? So can you do that without he can just, seeing the thing yes. that it was cast on? Yes, because he just has to name the spell. I already looked all this up because I was going to do the same thing as a warrant. I was just curious because because deeper darkness is cast on yeah. an object. You're right. You don't have to see the object. You have to name the spell. Well, I have a 36 spellcraft, so can I identify that this is Deeper Darkness? <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> no <Not> clue. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I would like to cast as well magic, which is just a caster level check. So here okay. it goes. 26. Well, joke's on you guys, because as soon as you do that, then the Blue Forge Fiend's going to just do the same stinking thing. So 26, and the DC is what? 11 plus the caster level? Yes, plus the spell's caster level. Yes, so that is sufficient to dispel the deeper darkness. 
That's funny. We wanted to do the same thing. <laughs> I, 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 I already checked my spell list, and I was like, oh, yep, I've got one instance already already <laughs> checked off of Dispel, so I suppose I can give it a go. I also have a punch dagger that I don't know what I was going to do with, but I was like, it has Dispel stored in it. Not sure what I'm going to do with that, but... <laughs> All right, so once that is dispelled and I can see, I feel this fire on my bum, and I'm going to get out of there so I don't get burned. <laughs> All right. I don't know, do I take fire damage at the start of my turn? Or is it just if I end my turn? I'm going to do it on his turn. Okay, so I'm going to move up here, and then I'm going to hide behind the corpse of this Gug. Okay, that brings us to Orin, who can see. Are these dangerous? The spikes? Yeah. Uh, I don't believe so, so I'll read this again. So, shards of twisted metal jut from the walls of a cavern to the west of this stone room. Um, rotting fur-covered corpses line the ground uh, and, and whatnot. But um, there is nothing written here saying that like you take damage by standing next to them. I think it is just uh, more of a environmental effect of the scander eggs being in here. Um, they have certain abilities that like stone, stone, I think a stone shape, something like that. And they have been kind of molding little spikes into the wall. Well, big spikes into the wall. But um, you can, like, stand there and not impale yourself as long as you actively avoid them. Okay. I'm going to cast a spell called Fire Belly. And do you move? Uh, yeah. You move back through the wall? Yes, into the wall, clearly. Yes. Okay. I'll move up into the area a little bit, and that'll be my turn. All right. That brings us to the blue Forge Fiend. And deeper darkness. He is going to step forward, and he's going to cast a spell. Oh, mm. and mm. let me just let me mm. just go ahead and hide mm. in this area again. I throw a punch dagger at him. <laughs> that brings us to the top of the next round, and uh, it is Jessup's turn. Oh, there's a rave going on here. The lights keep going on. <laughs> <laughs> Strobe light effect. <laughs> uh, Worst party ever. Jessup is going to. Let his performance fade, but it should linger. And then I don't, I think I can still cast haste. I just don't know who's within 30 feet of me. I think you need to target them. Do you? I believe you have to target each creature. Oh, I, you're right. I, think, I thought it was a burst in targeting me, so I could get hasted. You, you <laughs> yes. could. You it's could a burst it. after you. Well, I mean, you could, in theory. Can you cast haste on yourself? Yeah, but you have to, you do have to target each creature. Oh, so it's not a burst after he targets. Yeah, it is not a burst effect. It is just, it is a burst-like area. Is that what you want to do? Cast on yourself? No. Okay. I think this is a burst spell. Beacon of luck. It's a personal spell. Okay. So it just says you send out a burst of luck within with a 30-foot radius centered around you. So it is a burst. Yeah. While the beacon of luck is in effect, you get a plus two sacred bonus on all saving throws. This is immediate action before saving throws made. Allies within the area can choose to benefit from this luck, rolling twice. So I guess the thing is, how do they know if they're within... Do they just feel lucky? I guess. Sure. I would do that. So anybody within 30 feet feels lucky, Jason. So I I don't know if you just want to let the people know if they're within my range that they're feeling lucky. Uh, everybody's easily within, within 30 feet. Yeah. Okay, good. So I'm just going to put on my... 30 foot rates. Okie dokie. All right. And that's your turn? Yes, indeed. So, with that, uh, we'll go to Forge Fiend Red. He's going to move up. Or, and you hear the sounds of something getting very close to you as uh, the creature gets close. And then it is going to attempt to bite you. Nom, 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 nom. With its belly? Yes. I like it. And that'll be fun. So, you are effectively blinded. Yep. I got it checked. So, this is a. 36 to hit your blinded AC. <laughs> if, if I wasn't blinded, you know that hits. So that will be 15 points of damage. I'll take 8. Yes, you take 8 and Gideon will take 7. Gideon's like, ow! I can't even see what's happening. This is going to be really bad if somebody goes down and or dies. Go ahead and give me a reflex save, uh, Oren. Okay. Two higher now, and you can expend that beacon of luck. If you want. Yes, it is two higher, and you can expend the spell to uh, roll twice if you'd like. Nope, I'm good. I'll take the 20 then. 
20 will fail. Oh no! So it's sun- it gets a free sunder attempt against you. Okay. Terrible roll, but it's still a 27 against your CMD. Yes, that will sunder. Okay, I'm not even going to bother with that. The damage that this thing can do is not going to get through magical armor and do enough damage to be anywhere remotely significant. So you can feel it chewing away at your armor, and your armor definitely does take some damage, but it's not going to be enough to be uh, worthwhile at this point. So that is... uh, Oh, uh, it is then going to cast a Quicken spell, because I forgot that this was a Quicken spell. As you feel some fire hit you in the side, well, I guess I have to roll for it, but it's a touch attack against your... Yeah. You get hit by that easily. Touch attack against blind AC. Uh, which will deal 14 points of fire, so you take 7 and Gideon will take 7 fire damage. Uh, I've got 5 fire resistance. Then you will take 5, Gideon will take 4. That'll be its turn, and it'll go to Gideon, who is once again in the dark. Yep, but he'll once again just work with what he's got. We'll go ahead and do a divine touch. Oh, I'm sorry, Gideon, take three points of fire damage because you were in the wall when the guy's turn happened. Kind of a net zero there for everything. He'll once again stumble 10 or so feet forward, trying to not get hit by fire. Okay, yep, after you go 10 feet forward, you you don't feel the fire at at your back anymore. And then he'll total defense. Okay, that'll bring us to Kieran. All right, so Kieran will use his blind sense to try to, like, pinpoint the square where this creature is located. Yeah, so it is within 30 feet of you, and do you just immediately know the square? I believe so. So, like, it still has concealment, but, like, you know... like Yeah, so blind sense lets a creature notice things it cannot see, but without the precision of blind sight. They do not need to make perception checks to notice and locate creatures within range of the blind sensibility, provided it has line of effect to that creature... Any opponent that cannot be seen has total concealment against a creature with blind sense, and I still have the normal mischance when attacking foes that have concealment. Okay. So, yeah, you know that it is right here. I want to move to be in melee with it. And can you roll an acrobatics check for me real real quick? (laughs) Natural one. (laughs) Because, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, you would know from your blind sense that it is, you'd have to move 20 feet to get in melee with it which means you'd have to move more than half your speed in darkness, which means you'd have to do an acrobatics check. So I guess you would know that before attempting it, but... No, 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 no. My blind fight allows me to move at full speed while blinded. Okay, then never mind. You're good. I forgot I forgot you also had that. I forgot. So you get into melee with it. Yep. So I am growing my claws, and I'm going to do a bite attack. Oh, so you want to be, like, adjacent to it. Yes. Okay, you can do that. It'll take an attack of opportunity on you. It's just, I had put you 10 feet away for your glaive, but... Okay, I'll do the glaive then. I guess okay. he typically defaults to glaive, so I will hold off on the claws for right now and do a glaive attack. Okay. All right, so glaive attack number one is a 31. A 31 will hit. Okay, so that will be 20 points of slashing damage. All right. And I think that's my turn. That brings us to... Uh, actually, can you roll the uh, D-100s? I forgot about that. Oh, yeah. The two of those. 51 or higher is... A, okay, well, you got you got right, one so above and one below. 84, so. 44. Yep, so yeah. one of those works. That brings us to Orin. Orin, you are in the darkness. You've been hit, uh, and you you can hear... Um, Orin, uh, uh, you can hear Kieran stepping up and uh, whacking it with a glaive. I'm going to try to five foot step back. I guess you can still five foot step. It doesn't say it's difficult terrain or anything. So, yeah. I guess you're good. Yeah. Okay. And then I'd like to try Dispel. Okay. Yep. Go ahead and roll your caster level check against DC 11 plus the caster level of the creature. 30. 30. That will succeed. Cool. So let me (laughs) re-re-reveal. How can you so... Just... (laughs) He's going to have a seizure. He's going to have a seizure. <laughs> seizure by seizure. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And uh, that's your turn? Yes. Could you imagine how bad this would mess with your eyes in, like, real life? Like, going from deeper darkness to brightness to deeper darkness to brightness. Like, it would... Oh, it'd be terrible. 
Well, it's not brightness. Well, not though, brightness. Is it? I, no, no, no. That's not what I mean. I mean like to it's like being contrast. able to see. Yeah, like being able to see to not being able to see to being able to see. Yeah, it, it, it mess with you. Yep. So that brings us to the other Forge Fiend. I am not going to play it this way, but I'm pretty sure that most of the time when things are written this way. They can use each spellic ability the listed number of times. Yes, you could cast so I, deeper darkness. So technically, again. they <sighs> could do this another four times. This but, is um, each? And they would, Yeah. I don't want to do that because oh that's annoying. Gosh. So I'm not gonna. But I just wanted you to know what I could have done. I was just gonna let you use up your actions doing that. Honestly. Yeah, I think I think it was fine because then you could just keep doing it, and Kieran can just keep wailing on him. It's fine. I don't have to do anything in this combat to feel like I'm having fun. What it is going to do is it's going to cast a wall of fire. The flame is going to be pointed towards Orin and Kieran, but you are going to be in its square. So, okay. Gideon will take the full 19 points of fire damage. That's what it is. 2d6 plus 10. Yeah. So you'll take 19 points of fire damage. Kieran and Orin, you will both take seven. So Orin, you'll take four Gideon, you'll take another three. He's got fire resistance five. So we each take one. Yeah, you'll each take one. And then it'll it'll move up a little bit um, on its turn. But that'll be it. That'll be the rest of it. Top of round three, we are back to Jessup. Jessup, there is now a wall of fire obstructing your vision in front of you. And there's a wall of fire b- behind you. Um, so, yeah. So I can't see through the wall of fire is what you're saying. Yeah, it is an opaque wall of fire that you cannot see through. Oh, okay. Okie dokie. So Jessup is going to use his, uh, I guess, his move action to pull a potion out of his satchel and then standard action drink said potion. Okay. And that would be a potion of fly. Oh. And then Jessup will five foot step back. And he will, with action, just restart his performance, I guess? No, no, he'll let it linger. It's going to linger one more time. Okay. Sorry. Um, yeah, sure. That'll bring us to Red. Red is going to full attack. It's going to go after Kieran, because Kieran hit it. Ouch. So, first bite attack is going to be a 30. Yes. Second bite attack is going to be a 31. Yes. First claw is a 23. That is a miss. And then the final claw is a natural one. So. Oh, so I don't get rend damage. I don't remember if they have rend or not, but I don't remember. No, I don't see rend. Okay, cool. Uh, but you do take the bites. So 14 points of damage from the first bite. And 11 points of damage from the second bite. And again, I mean, I guess you can do a reflex save, but again, I don't think the damage is enough to really warrant much to your guys' armor or weapons. I don't wear armor, so I don't know. You if can you do just... your weapon still. All right, well, that's up to you. If you want me to roll a reflex save or if you're... I mean, just you can roll a reflex bottom. save, but I'm, I mean, just, I just, I'm curious. Natural one. Okay. It's so like it would hit you, but your your glaive is a plus two now, right? Yes. I don't think it could even get through the hardness of a plus two weapon, so. Gideon, that brings us to your turn. You are currently in a wall of fire. Yeah, I would like to not be in a wall of fire. Be my guest. We'll uh, move like so. Okay, that will provoke some attacks of opportunity. All right, they will take it. Uh, 35. Yeah, that'll hit. And 19. <laughs> so the second one misses. So 11 points. Of, so uh, the 35 deals 11 points of damage and the 19 misses. Yes. Okay. And then we'll just hit red once. Okay. You can certainly try. 28. 28 will hit. 17 points of damage. Okay. 17 to red. Noted. Uh, and that's Gideon's turn? That's Gideon's turn. That'll bring us to Kieran. Okay. Kieran is you going... You now do your full thing. 
Yes. So I will do my two attacks with a glaive, and then I'll use my bite and two claws to do those as well. Bite and one claw, right? I guess so. I Because you have to hold the weapon still. Okay. Whatever. Um, I will do the two glaive attacks first. Okay. So the first one's a 40, and the second one is a 21. 21 will miss. Okay, so that would be 21 points of slashing damage. Ouch. And I'm going to five foot step here and do my bite attack, which is a 17, and my claws, which is a 23. Uh, the, neither of those will hit. Okay, that's it. All right, that brings us to Oren. Let's do some stuff. Oren's gonna go at this guy. Okay, so you would provoke by from him to get in reach, but uh... oh, they have reach. Yeah, they have. They're they, they've been hitting from ten feet away. Oh, you didn't make me do any kind of concentration check for my there uh, dispel magic. That's because I forgot. I was going to say something, but then we got into it, and I forgot about it. So, actually, no, you five foot steps, so you were outside of reach. No, yeah, that's that's why I never said anything. Oh, yeah, you were you were fifteen feet away. So that, yeah. Oh, okay. I thought he was right in front of me when I five foot step back, but yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah, so you would provoke from blue getting into range, but you could walk there without actually provoking from red. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, it would be a kind of a wonky walk, but a I wonky mean, walk. Could, you I'd could do it. So yeah, walk down and then over. <laughs> yeah, it's only a twenty-two to hit, so you're good. Do they have some kind of special sense? Do we know? Do you have knowledge planes? Uh, yes. Can you roll that for me? Uh, nat 20. 26. So that is enough to identify them and get one piece of information. Would you like that to be your piece of information? Yes. So you know that Skanderigs have a special sense called Sea and Darkness, which is basically dark vision, but it works in every conceivable sense of darkness. Wow. Even deeper darkness. It is literally like sea in all of the darknesses. Okay, that's that's what I that's, wondered because that's I, why I had it cast. Yeah, because I was like, wait, if one of them cast it and the other one didn't, how do they see? Yep, see in darkness is sees perfectly in darkness of any kind, including deeper darkness. So interesting. That's neat. Yep. Okay, now I want to smack it with my hammer. Thirty-four will hit. Seventeen points of damage. All right, that's your turn. That's my turn. That'll bring us to Blue, who is going to step back. And he's going to full attack you and quickened produce flame. So we'll do the produce flame first because that's a quickened spell. That'll hit natural 18 and it's a touch attack. So that'll deal 13 points of fire damage. That's split. You will take seven. Oh, yeah. because it's So you'll both take four. Four. Okay. You and Gideon will both take four points of fire damage. And now it will do its actual attack. So its first bite uh, is a 29. Yes. Okay. 29 hits. Another 29 hits. The claws, higher that hits. The last one is a 26. Misses. Okay. No rend. So the first bite, 16. So you and Gideon will both take eight points of damage. Okay. The second bite is only 12. So you'll both take six more points of damage. And the claw is nine. So you will take five and Gideon will take another four. Okay. That's some decent damage it put out. That'll be its full turn. Top of round four. Uh, also, actually, sorry, I almost forgot. On Blue's turn, uh, Jessup is actually back within the 20 feet of that wall. So you will take two points of fire damage, Jessup. Uh, but that's it. And uh, actually, all three of you will both take two points of fire damage. Everybody takes two points of fire damage. I'm just going to roll it once. It's easier that way. I will not. Yeah, you take none, but Gideon, uh, Kieran, and uh, Jessup will all take uh, two points of fire damage because you're all within 15 to 20 feet of one of the walls. Um, but yes, yeah, so top of round four, Jessup, it is your turn. You are, you have fly, you can see. What would you like to do? Yes, so how tall are the flames? The opaqueness? They are 20, 20 feet high, so you can conceivably fly over them by, like, skimming across the ceiling. Okay. So Jessup will fly up. And do I have to double move or just single action? You will likely have to double move because going upwards takes you have a half speed. So if you have a fly speed of like 40 feet, you could within one movement go up the 20 foot distance, but then you'd be 
I guess you could just sit at the top of the wall if you wanted. But... Okay. Yeah, I'll do that. And then I will swift action restart my performance for Inspire Courage. So I'm 20, you said like just over 20 feet in the air, technically 25, I guess. Yeah, you're basically just, you're just like right above the wall. Or maybe you're just like behind the wall, just like your head is looking over it like a fence. But you can see and everything. Ah, okay. That's it. After Jessup, it comes to Red. Red, can I do the thing that I uh, keep forgetting to do? That's kind of annoying the way you've positioned yourselves, so maybe I won't do it. No, I'm going to do it because it's cool. (laughs) Deeper darkness. (laughs) He five foot steps back and he will open his... I'll show you this image more. His belly mouth. uh, And will spew forth some searing molten material. So as a standard action... A 10-foot square, so it's going to be the 10-foot square right in front of it, which will be... Well, actually, I'll roll a d2 to see whether it uh, goes between Kirin or, or Gideon. So, actually, d6. 1, 2, 3, Kirin, 4, 5, 6, Gideon. 4. Okay, so, yeah, Gideon. So, yeah, this, this square, molten material, gets spewed forth. Any creature in the area takes damage but gets a reflex save. So, you get a reflex save, Gideon. And I don't know if you have to choose before or after to do the double thing, but don't forget that is an option. I'll, I'll just choose it before. I mean, I don't know what else I'm going to end up using it on, so. Okay. So uh, a 20 and a 17? Yeah, that's right. Okay, n- neither of those will pass, <laughs> unfortunately. I don't have a bad reflex save. I have a 10. I mean, it's not great, but it's not it's not bad. Oh, that is a convenient yeah. number. I know it's a doozy. Uh, you take 42 points of fire damage. You're joking. Ooh. I'm not. You're I've j- got it in the chat here. You're joking. You ever want me to snip a picture of it for you? Um, no, I don't need that. I just... Yeah, that's a, that's a literal joke. Um, that's let me funny. See here. Yeah, I gotta I got check the text on something. So the slag quickly cools, forming a rugged pile of worthless scrap and misshapen metal that is treated as difficult terrain and crumbles into powder in one hour. So that square is also difficult terrain, just FYI. Yep. But uh, that will be its turn, and, and Gideon, it is now your turn. So if there's anything special that goes on, but... There there are some special things. Uh, okay, so first of all, I benefit from a Cure Light Wounds. Which spell is that? That's the Enduring Bloom. That's his weapon. Once per day, blah, blah, blah. Additionally, once per day when the wielder is reduced to hit zero hit points or fewer, the weapon automatically casts Cure Light Wounds on the wielder at the start of her next turn. And that didn't happen yet today because the last time that happened was on the the Gug Demon fight, which was yesterday. Yep. Yeah, so you would heal up eight points of health from that. Yep. Cure Light Wounds. I'll five foot step out. Okay. I will cast second wind, which will do 2d8 plus 10, because I am less than a quarter of my hit points right now. Okay. You also all benefit from Martyr's Last Blessing, by the way, so you should have benefited from Mass, because that one is also, if you're brought to zero... Nope, that one says if you're brought below. Just kidding. So that one doesn't go off. It's only this one that goes off. But anyways, that's 24 health to me. Rolled so as a swift deep. action, you do that. Okay. So five foot step, swift action. You still have standard and move equivalent. Yep. And we'll standard a cure critical for another 30. And then uh, move equivalent action. We will pull out, pull out the potion. And you don't have any issues pulling out items when you have a weapon in hand and a shield in the other? Uh, maybe I do. That's a good point. The shield's strapped, isn't it? It is strapped. But it's not a buckler, so it's not a free hand. No, I'm just checking uh, shielded mage, seeing what additional... It just it just lets me grab components, and it also lets me do somatic stuff, but I don't think it actually lets me grab anything. That's correct. So I won't do that. So that would bring us to Karen. Well, I think I'm going to try this see how this goes okay. we didn't get any information on their energy resistances which I can assume that fire is one of them but I don't know about electricity so we'll try it did you say that these spikes are flavor spikes or they're actual spikes both 
they're actual spikes that are flavorful. If you ta- <laughs> if you touch one, you instantly get tetanus. So, oh like dear. you can like you can maneuver between them and whatnot. Okay. Like you don't take damage for being in those areas. Um, okay. So because I would like to move there, and then cast a lightning bolt. Actually, no, 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 not a lightning bolt. I want to do one of my breath weapons that I get twice per day. So that you don't provoke. Actually, I think we did determine that you still do provoke with supernatural stuff, didn't we? Maybe not. I don't remember determining that, but if you want that to be the nope, case... No, I'd rather not, so let's happy. do it. Alright, so it is a reflex save. Uh, DC 20. Okay, their reflex is... I not mean, it's great, I would hope. It's, it's a number. It's a <laughs> <One>. number. <laughs> It'll be a 10 for the first one. <laughs> and, ooh, a good roll, an 18 on the second one. No. Alright, well... They still fail, so 38 electricity damage, and I guess we'll find out if electricity will affect them. Alright. Uh, I don't know if it does. It's been my luck lately that most things are resistant at least to electricity, so... You fire off this breath weapon, the electrical current courses through them, and you can see it's like, it's like just jolting down each of their limbs and sparking and whatnot, and they stutter for a moment. Um, it appears that it has affected them. Like, oh. they are still up, but they have been affected by the electricity. Good to know. All right. I was almost going to whip out my long shadow cloak, because I haven't used that yet, but if electricity works, then I don't need to make it anything else. Yep. Is that your turn? Uh, yep, that's my turn. That brings us to Orin. Hello. Five foot step up. Okay. Smashy smash. Okay. 35 and 27 will both hit. Uh, Do you get a third attack? I do not. We're not hasted. Take that back. Yes. Take that <laughs> back. Stop. You know, I'm trying. Feel bad. But... Make him feel. See, look. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to. Discord damage, though. Yeah, right. Well done with the discordant damage. So Goodness. That is 15, 32, 44 damage, I believe. Way to be discordant. All right. Decent damage. Decent damage. Still up, but you're definitely feeling like you're denting a lot of its side plates and doing quite a bit of a harm to it. The creatures seem to be stumbling somewhat. All right. That's your turn? Yes. Okay. It is Blue's turn. So uh, Gideon, because you are within 10 feet of the wall, you will take seven points of fire damage. Uh, Orin and Kieran, you take three. So Orin, you take two. Gideon, take another one. I don't take any. Oh, uh, that's right. Never mind. Gideon, don't forget yeah, about that. I, I didn't do it. I didn't listen to you. Uh, Kieran, you do take three, though. And uh, it's going to uh, it's going to full attack. It's going to do all the things. It's going to okay. do so many things. So many things. 30, even. Yes. First bite hits. Second bite is 29. I think 29 hit before. Yes. Claw is 22. No. And final claw is 30. So three yes. hits. It's the same as last round. Sorry, Gideon. This is going to hurt. It's my fault. So you both take nine. Second bite is minimum eight. So you both take another four. And then claw is almost minimum. Orin will take another five. Gideon will take another four. Oof. You ain't playing around. Thing hits. Top of round five, we're back up to Jessup. Yes. Yes. All right. Uh, we are going to maintain my courage for allies. Yeah. And then I think haste. <gasps> All right. Yeah, baby. Let's go. I'm excluding myself. So I'm casting on uh, Kieran. Why not? Okay. And that's your turn. Yeah, I guess I'll. Uh, the only thing I'll do is probably shift. Can I go here? Ten feet. Sure. I, I'm asking you, but you know I can okay. just move myself. All right, that brings us to Red. Red is going to full attack Kieran and then quickened produce flame on Gideon. Because why not? Oh, this is so good for me. So Gideon, does a natural twenty hit your touch AC? It happens to yeah in this in this instance. Does a natural 20 confirm? Wow. <laughs> oh, roll one more. I get roll roll one more. One. Roll, roll another one. That's for 15. Okay. All right. Uh, shame. <laughs> shame. Sorry. I thought I was being quiet again. Shame. 
Um, so that is... What a monster. 30, 31 points of fire damage because of the crit, right? <sighs> Jeez. Because you double the modifier on spells, right? Not just the dice. I think that's true, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Reduce that by 10. Okay, so what's the total number? Uh, 21. Okay. Uh, uh, and then the attacks on Kieran. So the bite, that'll hit with a 35. The second bite, uh, I think, hits with a 20, not 28 against Kieran. I think, I think that hits. Oh, yeah. Uh, the claw with a 21 misses. The other claw with a 25. So I was given haste, right? Yes. Oh, That's it was fine. cast on you specifically. Oh, so I should get double because it was cast directly on me. Uh, yes. I don't, I don't think that's how that works. Yeah, that's so cool. with double, my AC is 26. <laughs> that's not. That's how it works. That's how it works. <laughs> so three hits. Flavored double haste. <laughs> so the first bite is 15 damage. The second bite is 13. And the one claw that hit you is another 13. And it'll step over here just to spite you. That didn't actually help with the lightning bolt formation, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you said it. You said it. <laughs> that brings us to Gideon, who's doing well. He's feeling great. I'm doing just fine. Do it, do it perfectly okay. I'm gonna go ahead and do the old uh, divine touch. Wow. Yeah, not bad. Thirteen. Yeah, thirteen. And then we're going to go ahead and do the old uh, cure critical, <laughs> I think. Um, I don't is this know. what they meant by heal bot? This is, yeah, this is literally Just what I do. Healing. Yeah, no, I'm... <sighs> the best tank is a guy who goes into the combat, doesn't do any attacks. He just keeps casting like high level heal spells on himself every round. Yeah. 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 yeah it's fine. Hey, there is healer aggro in most games. You're doing fine. Yeah, because usually what would happen is if you were playing a cleric that had shield other, you would stay in the back and take damage, not also in addition to the damage from your ally, also take damage yourself. Gideon's just like, I'm not going to stand in the back. I'm just going to also take damage for myself and take damage for my ally who's getting hit constantly. Listen, that shield other's been clutch. For you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> for, oh, yeah. For you. For, for, for you. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, Horton's been, over I, here just like, I don't know why you guys, like, this AP is easy. Like, it's easy mode now. Easy he's mode like, AP. He's like, I don't need to channel. I feel great. Oh, why'd you come behind me, bud? What you I need? Just, no, I just, I felt safe here. You I feel safe like, there? Okay. Yeah, I, feel, I feel good. I feel like maybe the next heal spell could go towards you. I feel like I'll take only 1d4 fire damage. Hey, which, uh, pretty sure that we are now standing in what could be used this. Because there's another one that could, you know, uh, cast oh, yeah. that. Oh, yeah, that's true. Because the blue, the blue one could do it. Yep. <laughs> yep. We're, we're yep. like, yep. don't stand near me. Yeah. We'll go there. We'll go you, there. Listen, you do you, fam. We'll, we'll go there. Right. It's to say, just, it accomplishes my goal without just, also maybe just, dying. Just remember, you got to take... Okay. Yeah, it'll be fine. You'll live brings, forever. Brings us to Karen. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Just... Kill blue for the love of everything sacred. Kill blue. I'm not worried Kieran about it. Kieran is going to five foot step up. He will cast a lightning bolt. Please kill blue. Okay. Against blue and red. So it's a lower DC. So DC 17. Okay. So red. I'll start rolling these in the chat in front of it. A lot red. of ones in that 10d6. Rolls an 18. Okay. Blue. So fails. Rolls a seven. Okay. So they both fail, so they both take 38 electricity. Okay. Nice. So red, okay. I don't like the way you're laughing. It makes me feel really upset. <gasps> They're going to explode. My turn's not done yet, just based on what you say here. Yeah, okay, yeah. So that goes through. They're both still standing. Okay. Then I'm going to quicken magic missile on red. Actually, no, on blue. Blue. Not blue. Blue. You do you. You do you. You do you. You do you. I mean, right, you I'll can split, split it, it if I'm you I'm going to split it up. I'll send two two to red, a three to blue. Okay. Hey, I like those. that. So that's going to be a fifth level slot. 2d4 plus two against red is six. And 3d4 plus three against blue is 12. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so you step up, you cast. Was th This was the spell this time? Y yeah, this was a quickened magic missile. 
No, no, no. You didn't do the breath weapon. It was the actual lightning bolt spell. It was the actual lightning bolt okay. spell. So you go up and you actually cast lightning bolt this time. Again, the light electricity courses through their bodies. And you can see that it kind of like chains between them because they're so close. So it like goes back and forth. Um, but they're both still standing. You cast magic missiles, split the missiles up, and they both go down. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So red had 41 hit points, blue had 38. So you brought them to three and zero. And then with your magic missiles, you brought them both down. Oh, so no. question, what was the what was the DC on your lightning bolt? 17. So red passed. Oh, red passed. Oh, I thought you said he failed. No, red passed. Yeah, red got an 18. That's why oh, I was yeah. I guess I was thinking 20, oh. like the other one. Yeah. Oops. Well, then red is at full health now because you lied to me. <laughs> no, Red's probably still standing. Dang it! So, it, so Red was at forty-one. Uh, would have taken six. So that brings it to thirty-five. Half of the thirty-eight would be another nineteen. So, I mean, you know exactly how much HP it has now. But uh, Orin yeah. should be able to put it down. Uh, it is Orin's turn. Orin and Jessup will both move before it. But uh, Orin, technically, Red would still be alive. But it is your turn. As long as you can deal 16 hit points, well, 17 hit points of damage. I am hasted. 28 will hit, 19 will miss, 25 will just hit. 17, 13, so yes, you do put red down. And they explode, and Orin and Gideon die. I don't see death throws as an ability, but that would have been funny. It would have been really funny. That would have been insanely funny, actually. Yeah, I was waiting for it, honestly. I kind of thought they were going to have it. If they both blew up, that would have perma killed one of you. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm pretty <laughs> sure. I'm pretty sure both me and Gideon would have been dead. Would have been in serious trouble. That's for yeah. sure. Nope, nothing like that happens. After about half a minute, the walls disappear. I'm not going to bother with any uh, continued damage there. Yeah, I I am just curious though how much damage everyone else took total. It's just 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 because I'm just curious. About half. Half. Yeah, I'm at 75 of 131. Well, I took 30, and then I was healed up 30, and then now I am down three hit points and hurting my toe. I'm down 111. Okay, okay. Oh, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was, I'm just curious as far as benchmarking is concerned, because I took oh, probably about 200, because I went down to zero twice. Almost zero the second time. Not quite zero, but almost zero. And then healed up each time. Curious how much of that was dedicated to you and how much you self inflicted? Uh, it's most of it is shield other. Yeah. It takes up. Yeah. Well, if you think I took half, that means in reality, I took all of my hit points in damage. So I really took uh, like 100 and, 130 right, of right, my right. hit points, but Gideon took half of it. So I took a lot of damage. <laughs> 132 would be, you would be at one, right? Yeah. Yeah. I just, it just it's just been interesting to me how the math works out because Kieran almost dies every combat <laughs> every combat yeah, I get pretty head. close yeah 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 but that's that's why you just have to out damage them you just gotta out damage take them down before you go down well yeah and glass you're cannon. our damage dealer yeah you're classic glass cannon yeah my role has changed I never wanted Kieran to be a DPS but that's what the party kind of have to. So yeah. I don't really have a choice. <laughs> oh, I feel bad. I didn't know you didn't want to play that role. Well, I just, it's because sorcerers are the stereotyped, the blasters. And so right. I was trying to be creative, but. Well, yeah. listen, I, I wanted Oren to be a glass cannon, but, you know, <laughs> we have to fill the roles that were given. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So what, what Sarah told me when she gave me like the concept for Kieran is she said, the one thing I don't want him to be is a DPS. <laughs> oh, that's the hilarious. only thing that will ruin this game for me is if he is a DPS and then Iron Fang is just ruined. And Aww. you win dragons. Oh man. <laughs> Dragon disciple. You're like blasted, blasted everything. I don't know. No, it's all right. What was Kieran going to be? Couldn't be a tank. Can't really be a healer. He kind of was, I was trying to build him more as a tank. And he was like, like a high his, dex tank. His original concept was that he was going to be kind of what Gideon is and be more of a self buffer and someone who takes spells meant mostly for himself because he was okay. traveling by himself. 
Right. But then it just, and it kind of works out with the game because now that he's with a party, he's had to, not that sorcerers choose their spells and that, it's weird how sorcerers get their, their magic, but um, right, now that right. he's with a party, he's expanded out and taken more things that would benefit more than just himself. You're so considerate. As you guys stand here and the combatants fall, the fires all die down, you are left in this chamber that, again, you see the metal spikes jutting out of the walls and the uh, the tunnel continues down to the south quite a ways. I've revealed far more than your dark vision would uh, show, but I didn't realize that until after I did it. So I have a question. Yes. Are there any likes? <laughs> uh, you can look around, roll a perception check and detect magic and all that stuff if you want to. I would like to do all of those things. So I will okay. detect magic and I will roll a perception. So my perception is a 24 and then my detect magic. Okay. So you're detecting magic. You're looking around the room uh, with a 24. You see a couple things. You find a trove of precious gems near the western edge of this chamber. Uh, you can do an appraise check to see how much that's worth. But in reality, since they aren't a leg, he probably, Kieran probably just kicks them into the dirt. No, oh, he likes gems. Almost as like almost as much as legs. Okay, he doesn't have a leg fetish. Let's just put that out there right now. Okay, he's. Oh my, oh my goodness! Gosh, guys. That's the third natural one I've rolled this session. What is happening? So we have a 16 appraise from Oren, a 3 <laughs> from Jessup, and a 9 from... Oh, we got a 20 from Gideon. 20 from Gideon, Mine all right. Mine is 12. Everyone is just, just yeah. like, I don't know. I've never seen a rock before. I have a plus 8, but I rolled a nat 1. Like, that's sad. So all of you guys are looking at the gems. Oren and Gideon, between the two of you, you think if you were to collect all these gems and sell them as like a, a bulk uh, bundle to like a jeweler or something, you could probably get somewhere around 4,500 gold pieces altogether. Okay. It's decent. So, another thing, Kieran, your detect magic does pick up a magical headband uh, on one of the gugs. So I will peel that off its sticky, slimy corpse, hold it in t- with two fingers like it's a piece of garbage, and roll a spellcraft. I'll aid. I'll, I'll let anybody who aids, who wants to aid, go first. Just put auto aid. I don't auto aid. I mean, I aid, but I don't auto aid. Wow, nat 20. Okay. Yeah, you wasted your nat 20 on that. Wow. All right, so Which... that's a plus six <laughs> yep. on top of this. So help me if this is a natural one. So help me. Okay. Hey, so hey, there you go. 37 yeah. plus six, 43. Okay. Orin's 27 would not have been enough, but your 43 is enough to identify a headband of counterspelling. So this metal headband grants a plus five insight bonus on spellcraft checks made to identify a spell as it is being cast. Furthermore, once per day, the wearer can attempt to counter a spell by casting the appropriate spell as an immediate action instead of doing so with a readied action. The wearer must first identify the spell being cast before countering a spell. That's pretty cool, actually. That's pretty cool. Very nifty, especially with how many counter spells we've had to do the last, like, few sessions i feel like we have to use dispel magic at least once a session now yeah that's worth twenty thousand gold it is worth twenty thousand gold which i don't feel is worth that much but that's just my own opinion in my opinion if you spec into this and you're in a magic heavy game it could be pretty useful situationally very useful situationally not useful it's one of those things that like it's like if you're at the end game and like somebody casts like wish or like something to like kill you like power power word kill and like you've specced into certain spells so that you could counterspell those sorts of spells that's like game changingly good but Correct. like if you're just counterspelling like a magic missile this this in my opinion is a very like although the price is low and it's cast level 13 this is a high level magic item like you're playing a wizard you've got a permanent headband slot or a fo- floating iune stone that you got free somehow and then this is to help you spec into spells to counter game ending things to stop the big bad evil from ending the game else it's not that great <laughs> like it's just it's just one of those yeah, I figure that for the current party, there is nobody that would really benefit from it because you probably all have headbands of like a stat booster at this point. 
You basically have to be a wizard to benefit from this, though, too. And very prepped. I would argue sorcerers potentially better if you've picked your spells well. Yeah, an arcanist would be best, but... Because if you, if you spontaneously cast, then you can counterspell a little bit easier. But if you're a prepared caster, then if you know what you're doing, then yeah. It just requires game mastery in a way that's annoying, in my opinion. Well, fun, but I don't know. Rather well, that's prepared. a lot. That is pretty typical for prepared casters like wizards and whatnot. Yeah. Like, the more spells that you know about, the, the better your wizard's going to be. That's just how it works. That's kind of like with a fighter. The more feats you know about, the better your fighter is going to be. Well, I was uh, earlier to, though, like when Sarah specced into blind fight, which has come up pretty often, but not a ton. It really puts in perspective, in my opinion, how very strong martial flexibility is for brawlers. That's pretty cool. So one other thing that you notice, Kieran, is that among the Forge Fiend's collected spoils appears to be a petrified leg. Huh. Wait, for real? Yeah. <laughs> it says here, I don't know how you would ever get this information, but it says here, the Gugs wielded the leg as a cudgel in their early battles against the Forge Fiends and discarded <laughs> the weapon when they retreated back. Maybe you see <laughs> battle damage on it or something. So you see the, you see a well-used petrified leg. <laughs> oh no, well-used? Is it? Does it have all its... Toes? It's it's intact. It's Does intact. Does it have a boot on it? Like, is it a booted leg? The the boot has been worn off from the the cudgeling, but the foot is still there. You're lucky the forge fiend didn't eat it. He's gonna take that leg, and then he will okay. teleport back to where his brother is. Okay, JK. he's yep, not doing. You're that. gone. <laughs> Let's move over here on the map. <laughs> No, he will take that leg and put it in the bag with the other leg. Now, just to clarify, though, it's the opposite leg from the leg he already has, right? So he's yes, not picking up is, somebody else's leg. No, this is the other leg that you need. These are you now collectively have a whole petrified person. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> All right, so that that perks Kieran up quite a bit. He he's like got a weight lifted off his shoulders with that. <laughs> Technically not you're carrying the legs well they're in the bag it's negligible plus he's so strong that a petrified leg is like a toothpick to him okay wow <laughs> <laughs> that's what happens when you have a lot of muscles oh, oh my gosh Stop. moving on uh, that is all that you find in this chamber <laughs> that's all i need to find in this chamber all right boys let's go our work here's done obviously we press on I would like to, as we continue on, I'm going to cast a mirror image. Use the uh, extend rod, Kieran. Okay, I will use the extend rod. So mine will last for 22 minutes. As you continue down the tunnel with all of the protruding spikes jutting out everywhere. Jessup, suck in as you're going through this narrow part. Really? Because I... <laughs> all right, you know, whatever. <laughs> I'll show you how to get through here. Ha! Ha! Oh, wow. That's You're right. You're just dancing through this. <laughs> I'm dancing off the spikes. Doing the worm through here. On his, the spikes. His name should be Jack. Why should my name be Jack? Jack be nimble. Jack be quick. Jack, oh. jump over the candlestick. Jessup sat on a candlestick. All right, Jason, as we're walking through here, I would like to be perceiving... Yes, you guys continue forward, and you can see uh, this tunnel opens up to a larger room. Several stalagmites break up this ancient cave, varying in height from a human child to almost 20 feet tall. A pit looms in the southern extension of the cave. To the east, the rocky ground gives way to a finely carved stone floor, which I'll actually reveal to you here, right there. That's a finely carved floor. It is, it is very finely carved. Yeah, boy. Warren does like stones. So does Kieran now. Kieran has an affinity for stones as well. Yeah, Kieran, the only thing that you see looking around. Oh, is this a pit? Yeah, that is a, a pit that looms in the southern extension of the cavern. The only thing you see is that near it, there are several bones. Bone shaker. All around that pit. And they look to be of varying sizes, but probably mostly humanoid. 
and they seem to be picked clean of flesh. Okay, I'm gonna detect magic as I approach. Okay, you don't detect any magic. And I would like to take a closer look at the bones. They don't seem to move at all as I get closer, do they? No, they don't seem to move. You don't detect anything magical going on there. If you kind of like get close to the pit, you kind of peer in and it, it goes down unbelievably deep. You have no idea how deep this pit goes, but... Can I send some dancing lights down? You send dancing lights down. They go to the extent that you can send them and you still don't see the bottom. That's horrifying. I think Jessup can send them a hair further being a higher cast level, correct? <laughs> sure. Yeah, it's ranged 10 feet. An extra 10 per level. So I think I can get an extra, what, 20 feet? Yeah, if you were to do that, you still don't see the bottom. Ah, <laughs> oh, can I try? So Kieran would ask the others, do you think it's worth flying down and seeing what's down there? Or trying to fly down as far as I can go? I do think that's a good idea. I, I'm just getting the group consensus. I don't know if there's... I don't know. Although, you're right, I probably would lose my mirror images if I were to do that, so maybe we can do that at the end once we've cleared this whole place out. Everybody go ahead and give me a perception. Oh, crap. Perception check. And go. 20. Perception check. Go. <laughs> go, go, gadget eyes. Activate. Go, go, natural 20. So... Gideon, you exactly hit the uh, the DC to notice that the stalagmite over here, you see it move very, very slightly. It's probably another one of those grappler guys. What were those called? A roper. Roper? A roper. Yeah, yeah the, the closer you look at it, Gideon, the more you think that it is a familiar looking creature on the other okay. side. Okay, <laughs> let's not... It, it, doesn't, it doesn't seem to be making any move towards you right now. But, like, the closer you guys got, it seemed like it was preparing for something. Yeah. Like a child about to cross the road in a dangerous traffic, Gideon puts his left hand to block Kieran. Oh. Oh, I forgot. I rolled its stealth, and it rolled a 9 plus 20. I forgot that it gets a plus 8. So maybe you wouldn't have seen that, but uh, I didn't notice that in time. So It's okay. I could just... You uh... noticed the thing that you maybe didn't notice. We have this intuition that potentially... Because we have dealt with stalagmites before, stalactites or whatever, maybe Ropers. we should slowly back away. Yeah, I forgot that in uh, stony or icy areas, it gets a plus eight to stealth, which I assume is not calculated in. But in Intuition would tell us that there's just corpses down there, like the roper just... Well, you see piles of bones all around the pit that have been picked clean of flesh, so it kind of makes sense when you think about that and realize what's going on. So. I don't think there is anything good for us there, Kieran. Any points ahead so you can see the creature? That's a rock. Uh, I think it's a roper like we found before, So, Gideon, I'm going to need you to prove that to me. Can you walk up a little bit further and we'll wait for you back here? He gives you a very <laughs> cheery smile. Oh, why don't I? As he watches, walks like dangerously close to the edge and then joins the group. I, Jess will lean into Kieran. I can never tell if he's smiling under that full plate armor and helmet. <laughs> I think, I honestly think that he's suicidal. The things that he does? Wait, wait, Kieran, I got an idea. We should use that rod of magic wonder thing and see if we can <gasps> summon an elephant down the hole. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep casting. <laughs> see that, if the rope will pull a magic wand. That can't backfire on us at all. I'm so tempted. I'm so tempted, but I don't think in this situation that Kieran would do it, but I want to so badly. <laughs> Come on, Kieran. You found the two legs. You met a quest. Time for fun. I want to use the Rod of Wonder all the time, but I cannot. Jason, I, I look around my immediate surroundings. Do I notice anything? No, there's nothing going on. Okay. I just rolled a d100 because I was, cur I was curious what would have happened if you'd used the Rod of Wonder. Now I know. What would have happened? You would have cast Fairy Fire all around the, the <laughs> Roper. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Awesome. All right. In this little alcove, before we go further, I'd like to check for traps. 22. One more, more one at a time in case there are traps, then only one of us will potentially get blown up. No, no, no. Apparently Gideon's the one that wants that, so he can go first. You don't see any traps. I only take half damage, mind you, so it'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> I heard the smile under that helmet that time. All right. You walk into this chamber, four massive stone pillars rise up to the ceiling of this grand hall. Rocky debris 
piled from floor to ceiling blocks the passage further south. Similar debris blocks a connecting hall that leads to the east. I'll reveal that here. You saw that from before. The side chambers seem accessible both to the east and west, um, while a hall to the west, some 30 feet north of you, looks to continue further in. A vast iron door, nearly 20 feet wide and decorated with dwarven iconography, seals the chamber's northern exit. And you can see, anyone who can read dwarven can see, there is a plaque above that giant door. Uh, The symbols in dwarven denote the area beyond as the Chamber of the Onyx Key. I don't know about you guys, but with my experience in this adventure path, I would imagine that's probably where the boss is. Gideon, cool guy nods. What are you talking about? <laughs> There's definitely nothing going to be behind that door that will kill us. For sure. Are there any petrified things in here, Jason? No, doesn't look like it. And then this place across, Kieran would like to move to look at that. I am moving along the rubble here. Okay. Yes. So you're moving closer to there. Let me, I'll just, I'll reveal the whole thing here. Before you go in, you would see a plaque at the top of it, and it would say, uh, because you can read Dwarven, so you would read it as Clan Durain's Weapon Vault. And as you look inside from, you can see out from outside, even where you're standing, you can see there are metal racks that line the walls of the stone vault, uh, and it seemed to be covered in dust-shrouded weaponry. Ooh, I will take a peek as I move into the room and... Again, checking for traps. So a 13, there's no traps. You don't see any traps. Um, Gideon with detect magic, you detect 12 magical auras. There's a lot of magical weapons in here you detect, basically. Oh my goodness. Probably just like plus one long swords and stuff like that. There's a lot of magical weapons I detect in here, basically. I don't know if we're here to to take the things out unless we needed them. I don't need a weapon. Do any of you need another weapon? Gideon will focus for the three rounds. Is there any of particularly strong aura, or are these likely all just plus one magical weapons of various kinds? Some of the weapons do detect as uh, strong auras. Most of them are faint. Okay, I'll take a look at the strong ones. Uh, It looks to be some crossbows, some heavy crossbows. Oh, of course. Great. There are a bunch of magical dwarven war axes. There are a bunch of magical war hammers. Um, and then there are like four heavy crossbows. And the crossbows are the only ones that are... The crossbows are the only ones that have a stronger aura, yeah. Like Kieran said, uh, they're not exactly ours to take either, but um, the crossbows are of strong magical power. The others are just mundane magic, or lesser magic, I should say. I think it'd be fine if we needed one, but if nobody really needs it, then yeah, we should probably leave them. Yeah, I don't think I need anything like that. Plus, I mean, we would definitely return it if we used it. It's not like we would be taking it with us. But I don't have any use for a crossbow. I've got other options, so... Yeah, I'm good with the uh, bow that I have. Uh... I'll grab one of them, Jace. The one that looks the nicest. Okay, so... Let me just move you back in there. Uh oh. The golems are going to come get no. you. So, Gideon, you walk up to the far side wall and you grab one of these crossbows. And you turn and you make your way, you, you go to make your way back out. But the moment you disturb this crossbow, the temperature in the room plummets to freezing. And then moments later, a magical sigil on the ground appears out of nowhere wasn't there before as a creature is summoned oh no (laughs) (laughs) i really i really was not going to until orin was like oh man doesn't matter and you probably are not even going to use that crossbow what is that what is this nonsense i cast shield on myself so i could use the crossbow for this literally upcoming fight yeah but okay the thing is you we found a crossbow but did we find cross bolts i assumed that i would find some but man well, that's hilarious because what if there isn't well i didn't think about it all the way that far through yet okay i grabbed it off the wall i didn't put it back you don't need it Oh, uh, Kieran like almost doesn't even want to do anything right now. <laughs> just wants to let Gideon do his thing. 
So as you stand there, this creature is summoned out of nowhere. And you can see, I, I blew it up there for you. I'll do it again. This is the creature that appears. Do any of you have... I know some of you have knowledge planes. Gideon, do you have knowledge planes? I do have knowledge planes. Everybody who wants to, go ahead and roll a knowledge planes on this thing. Okay, so Gideon and Oren are not sure what the creature is. Jessup, you are able to identify what it is, but you don't get any information. Karen, you identify it and you get one piece of information about it. Uh, no, so the two no, 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 no. Jessup rolled twice because he has his thing. Kieran doesn't have yeah. planes. I was like, Kieran gets it with its 13 perception <laughs> that he rolled? Like, what? Kieran what? doesn't even, Kieran's not even looking that direction. He's like, what? oh, wouldn't it be funny if this thing popped up right now? Sorry, no, I, I saw four rolls, so I just assumed everybody had rolled it. Oh, you just assumed Jessup sucked at rolling. Thanks. So Jessup, yeah, you identify it and you get one piece of information. You made me really nervous, Jason, because I was like, a 31 doesn't get any information. <laughs> I know, that's what I thought. I'm like, holy oh, crap, that thing is bad. <laughs> so, Jessup, you identify this as an ice devil, also known as a Gelugan devil. A pair of frozen, multifaceted eyes coldly judge all of you as it towers this insectile monstrosity. Um, and you do see what it looks like there. And you get one piece of information. It's a lawful evil, large outsider with the devil, evil, extra planar, and lawful subtypes. Oh, of course it's lawful. Hmm. Give me some resistances. You know that it has DR. It's immune to fire and cold and poison. And it has resistance against acid. And it does have uh, SR. So those are its defenses in a nutshell. So, but lightning's okay. Yeah, it doesn't seem to have anything about lightning. Okay. So Jessup will shout it out. Ugh. Gideon summon a bug ice demon thing. Karen, you can zap it. <laughs> Gideon, Gideon, Gideon. Gideon. I like how Gideon was the one who had to put his hand up to stop the you know, eight-year-old Karen from running across the road with the carriage. And he will go pick up a random He's weapon like, he won't even shiny. use. <laughs> Ooh. No. I don't all of these, these, all of these ores were pretty bad. They're only plus one. Ooh, this is a little stronger aura. <laughs> I'll just be taking this. Listen, Iden would have been proud of him. Okay, Iden <laughs> would have been real. Iden would have grabbed them all. Though. That's all the of them. <laughs> Iden, Iden would have thought, oh, great, four for Oh, me. that would have been amazing. <laughs> the ghost of Iden appears and protects the weapons. <laughs> These are <laughs> my weapons. Jason was probably like, man, they're going to bypass this whole encounter. And then Josh is like, ah, uh, <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> I was thinking that it was going to go that way. It's it's just so funny, the randomness of it all. I happen to cast shield, so I happen to have a hand free, so I happen to be able to use a crossbow. In that exact moment, I get Or, or you could have just been two-handing your weapon for more damage. Well, that's what I'm going to do, obviously. Well, you're not going to do that with a crossbow in your hand, are you? Well, I'm going to drop it as a free action at the start of my turn. So, as this creature appears, do any of you speak... I guess, what languages do you all speak? Just everybody put your languages in there so I can see who speaks what language. I don't speak the language of devils. I am but a commoner. Is it a None of you speak Infernal. Infernal, that's the devil one. Rap. So you see this creature appear out of nowhere and it kind of looks around and it kind of like, you can see its shoulders and its head like sag ever so slightly. And you can like, you hear what, go ahead and give me a sense motive actually. I'm not because I'm like way out of the room. 26. Jessup. You you hear this creature exhale and it doesn't it's not like a normal breath. It almost sounds like a like a sigh. <laughs> like he's exasperated. <laughs> and then the creature says something in a language you don't understand, and then we'll have everybody roll initiative. Speak English, man. So a 13 for Gideon. Can Kieran like just not roll initiative? He's just gonna sit crisscross applesauce outside. <laughs> he's just not getting involved. <laughs> He hears danger, but is like, nope, <laughs> nope. Oh, <laughs> I get rolled a natural one. There's my fourth natural one of the day. This is going well. So at the top of the round. Listen, like, can we go ahead and record this for a second? That that never happens either. That Orin has the highest initiative. That doesn't happen. I have a five. Right. Top of the round. This creature will be going first. And it is going to start off the combat with a spell aimed directly 
at Gideon. So Gideon, I need a reflex save as this creature extends its hand and a cone of frostiness comes flying towards you. A 14 is going to fail, so you will be hit by the full damage of this cone of cold, uh, which is going to be 45 points of cold damage to You're you. You're joking. <laughs> and that'll bring us to Oren's turn. Uh, you, you, he's going to shout to Gideon. Uh, you might, might want to put the weapon back. Uh, cl- clearly, clearly they're protected. Maybe, maybe this thing will show some mercy if you put it back. Oh, great, Oren. That's what I get for trusting you. Yep. Yep. Sorry. <laughs> and, uh, uh, I guess he'll... <laughs> I don't have any channels left. I got nothing to help you with, and I'm not going to hit it yet. Okay. So, yeah. Next up is Jessup. Jessup. So when he identified it, what what did you provide us? The, like we we knew it was a demon and such. Yeah. So you know that it is a devil, lawful evil. I gave you its general defenses. Okay. So Jessup is going to cast tongues on himself, and not knowing the language that it speaks, he's going to assume that it's going to be abyssal. I guess. I would say you having knowledge planes, you would know that devils don't do, do not speak abyssal. Devils speak infernal. Demons speak abyssal. Oh, I'm sorry. Yep, I guess that's what I meant. So yes, just will speak that one. Okay. So he'll cast that on spells uh, on himself, and um, he will try to talk that thing down with uh oh oh it was just a big misunderstanding. Uh, we will get the Tin Man to put that back, please. And he will attempt to look very passive. Okay, uh, go ahead and roll me a diplomacy. Ha! 31! The creature turns to face you, and uh, it doesn't respond quite yet, but it looks like you've got its attention. Moving on, we'll say that is your other action. Moving on, yeah, we... Just has no we, weapons out, by the way. Yep. So. That brings us to Gideon. He'll turn around, put it back, and then kind of gesture with his hands, like, yeah, sorry about that. It's back, it's going back, it's done. Okay. Anything you want to do, Kieran? Kieran's just going to wait and see how this plays out. He probably will move up so that he can get an idea of what's going on in the room better. (laughs) Perfect (laughs) line. (laughs) So the creature on its turn speaks back to you, Jessup, in Infernal, and says, I'm just doing my job. I've had this contract for so long. It always seems to show up at the most inconvenient times. But, you know, you put your signature on a piece of paper, you got to do it. So, sorry about this. Just, you know, job's a job. Although, and then he turns around, sees that you put the weapon back on. He says, I guess technically you didn't take anything. Thanks for a moment. Uh, how about we strike a deal here? I won't kill all of you if you do what you just did two more times. Uh, wait, what? Like, so like my contract, I've got three more summons left. This was the third one. So I've got, I've got two more summons. So like, if you left the room for a bit and waited for me to, you know, disappear, came back in and took another weapon, summoned me again, just did that two more times. I'm obligated to attack you at least once when I'm summoned. But, like, if you could deal with that two more times, I'd only attack you the one time. And I'd let you guys, I'd let this one go for now. Can Jessup respond? Is free action or? At this point, since nobody's doing anything hostile, yeah, I'll, I'll let you just respond. So Jessup will respond. Uh, it, it, oh, um, okay, I guess if, if I volunteered to pick up the weapon to help you, can you just at least attack me with, like, non-lethal slap or something? Or, or just a tickle you know you don't have to really hurt me too bad the fluff is for show well what I could do is I could cast I could just cast ice storm instead that only does a little bit of damage you could survive that one okay so we shall make that a bargain I will just pick up the weapon and let you hit me and then we'll figure that out from here okay sounds good okay all right it's a deal so you guys wait for a bit, and after a minute, the creature disappears. Okay. 
Jessup will explain, it's like, yeah, apparently that thing is uh, contracted to defend this area, and that's why he popped out and attacked Gideon. Uh, he just requested that we summon him two more times, so his contract is voided, but he will have to smack someone a little bit. I mean, he's not there now, so we don't have to, but I don't know. Yeah, so, like, is there a knowledge check to know whether, like, can the devil thing come back if we don't meet the conditions for it to come back like it can't just summon itself into the world can it with your collection with your collective knowledge about planes and whatnot you would know that generally speaking devils have a, a tendency to form contracts with mortals and those contracts often entail things like hey if you defend this place for x number of years or if you are summoned to defend it x number of times we will pay you like either sacrifices or our souls or money or whatever the, the the devil wants in in payment so you think it's not going to summon itself it's more like this contract has just kind of been hanging over its head for who knows how many thousands of years and it just like i guess according to what it said you you get the sense that every now and then like something happens and like it's just ripped out to do its duty over here at as it said some of the most inconvenient times and it sounds like it's just getting a little sick of it but there's only a few more times left so the devils are known for trying to they'll follow the letter of the law in their best interpretation and they'll always try to find ways to cheat the system so in this case he can void his contract by having it happen a bunch of times and not actually have to do anything yeah, so, it, it, yeah, it's funny like that. Like, you, you contract a devil to protect your belongings for a certain number of times. The devil will be like, sure, but will then work with the invader to expire all of those times as soon as possible. Like, that's <laughs> totally within a devil's, like... That's 100%, yeah. The only thing that's a little concerning is that uh, he said he wouldn't kill all of us, right. so he could kill some of us. Right. Uh, if he had wanted to, he left that loophole convenient. But I don't. J Gideon doesn't know that. He also didn't sign anything, so I don't know if that's binding or not. <laughs> I guess my question was: Is like, can he come back if we don't pick up another weapon? Like, can he come back now if he if we don't? You don't think so? Okay. You don't like most devils don't have like plane shift. I mean, it could it could he could get there if it wanted to, but it, it's not like its own innate spell like ability to plane shift or anything. Right, they'd have to work for it. Yeah, so uh, I don't, I don't know. What, what do you guys think? Should uh, we play game or just kind of cut our losses that Gideon got, you know, frostbite? I am not the one who promised him anything. I think it is your word, and I don't think there's a wrong answer. So, do what your heart tells you, Jessup. Well, I don't really want to be slapped around, but at the same time, let's just think that we clear this entire area out, and that we do need to bring other dwarves in. Maybe the dwarves will try to touch some of the weapons of the belongings and summon it. So it seems likely that the dwarves are the one that made the contract. I guess maybe if you guys just want to stand at the ready, so in case things go south. I mean, my vote would be that we just don't we just don't engage with the devil anymore. We just move on. Really? You don't, you don't make deals with the devil? Not particularly. I will stand by you, Jessup. Whatever you do, I will be there for it. What do you think, Karen? I'm kind of indifferent, actually. I think if you're careful, you probably could get around it, but I think there's too much room for interpretation that we could get ourselves in a bad spot. Well, when have we ever gotten ourselves in a bad spot before? Maybe, just maybe, if we clear this whole place out, we can come back and uh, consider his arrangement. Well, but then it does come into play that, did you agree to do this for him? Because if you agreed to do it, then I would say you probably should do I it. I mean, yeah, I, I did kind of say I would do it. You, you did say you would do it? I, I did, kind of, yeah. Uh, well, in that case, Jessa, my, my wisdom tells me that if you make a deal with the devil, you should definitely get that done as quickly as possible. You don't want that to loom over you. All right. Jessup will just pick up the weapon and just, like, wince, okay. <laughs> knowing what is going to happen. He just holds it and just, like, defeated face. You pick up the weapon, and again, the creature is summoned, and it looks at you and it kind of like squints a bit. Like, that took a suspiciously long time to do. <laughs> well, you you did leave it as an undisclosed amount of time to pass, so we were just you know, <laughs> making sure you were good. Just I I I said I picked it up. 
just puts it back and just kind of looks down. All right. So as the creature said, it will cast Ice Storm, which, because you guys are all right right there, will actually affect all of you because it's a it's a twenty foot radius. Um, oh nuts! Oh really? You could just pick just center it on Jessup. Uh yeah, I suppose that's true. Um, so it casts Ice Storm, which deals thirteen points of damage. So it deals some bludgeoning damage and some cold damage. It will then, on the very next turn, dismiss it. And it just kind of like looks around and says, yeah, so. Gideon will wave. Thanks for doing this. It switches over to common and says, yeah, how you doing? <laughs> I didn't realize you spoke common. Huh? Yeah, I speak like four languages. I can also speak telepathically. It then speaks telepathically to uses what's up. And then it disappears. All righty. <laughs> well, just to uh, heal himself, I guess. Uh, I, I, I'll take, I'll take, I'll take the next one. I, well, I, I do have energy resistance uh, cold, so you know that <laughs> probably probably makes the most sense. I probably should have been the one to take it last time, but you know, uh, you seemed real real gun ho about it. Um, okay, well, I guess it speaks common. I, I, I guess so. I'll move out, and uh, you you do your thing. The creature um, appears once more, looks around, and says, "Oh, different one." Yeah, he wants to be hit now for some reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that works for me. Eskism is up. Oh man, last time that's good. Do you want? Do you want to take a moment <sighs> and just to, like nice. enjoy it? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's like it's actually like look around and you know, like finally you don't have to see this place ever again. You know, just out of curiosity, you know, what what deal did you make? Oh, they said that I could guard this place for the next hundred times somebody tried to take some of their weapons, and. uh yeah, been doing this for a while. What'd you get out of it? Oh, they gave me like 100,000 gold. Oh, that's pretty sweet. I spent that a long time ago, though. Oh. Anyways, and then he casts Ice Storm on uh, Orin. So the cold damage doesn't go through, so you only take the bludgeoning damage. So you take seven points of damage, which I guess would be split, so four and three. There we go. This, yeah, and he kind of stretches his, mm, yeah, that's nice. Thanks for that. If uh, you're ever in hell, go ahead and look me up. Sure. What's, uh, what's, what's, your, what's your name? Oh, you, you just call me Krymos. That's what most people call me. If I ever find myself in hell, I'll look you up. Yep. That just turns it's like, wow, you really faulted from Milani, I guess. Yeah, well, not really planning on it, but he doesn't need to know that. Anyways, bye. I mean, I understand you. common too, so, and then disappears. Wait a minute. Could you be reincarnated as a devil? Uh, no, I don't think so. Wait, you don't think, or is that a no? Both. Uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm not arrogant to assume that I know everything, but I truly do not believe that Milani's will would have me reincarnated as a devil. Though perhaps she has some service in hell from which someone loyal. But I don't know how hell works, and I, I think outsiders are bound to their plane, so I, I don't think it would make sense. But my planner knowledge is not very good. Well. I guess we can go continue on, or Gideon, if you wanted to ramsack uh, the rest of that room, I guess you can now. Oh yes, if you wanted the crossbow, I suppose you could take it now. I'll uh, I'll take the crossbow. <laughs> After all that, he doesn't take the crossbow. No, I do, I do. Um, I'm also going to use a potion of cure moderate wounds. So yeah, you can grab one of those crossbows and uh, some bolts. You'll be good to go. All right, well, what more trouble can we get into? Well, I think before we go through the giant iron doors, we probably should check out what this hallway is. Just a thought. Ah, you don't, you don't want to be flanked or something? That would definitely subvert my expectations if the boss was down this way instead of through the giant <laughs> iron doors. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. I, I don't think I'd be laughing, Warren. I would not be laughing. A uh, couple things. Um, before you guys move on, as you guys are speaking, you actually get to like the middle chamber of the room. And I need everybody to roll a perception check. 23. How about a 41? Let's go. Oh, 22 is so chevy. As you guys are walking along back through this chamber, uh, the three of you who rolled there, you all notice that there is a, a trail of long dried blood droplets that lead from the middle of this massive chamber towards the doors to the north, as if some grievously wound creatures stumbled into the chamber beyond and a few moments later as you're kind of like looking at this 
you hear noises. It sounds like battle going all around you. Uh, like the faint sounds of battle. And a few moments more later, you begin to see things. Faint, wispy, ethereal forms begin to appear around you. Three of them. One of them appears to be the form of a hobgoblin woman in a hooded coat. Another is a familiarly serpentine figure that you guys seem to have seen once before several weeks ago in World. And the third appears to be an enraged Medusa. You guys are seeing these images around you, this this battle scene play out. And it's almost as though you're seeing a vision that's layered on top of reality, like you're seeing both at the same time. The battle is fast and chaotic. The figures move at speeds that you struggle to keep up with. And the serpentine figure of Xanathura casts spells that some of you don't even recognize. And at the climax of this battle, you see Xanathura call forth a swarm of spectral tentacles that grasp the Medusa, while the hobgoblin woman darts behind the Medusa and lunges at her with a blade towards her back. And just in that moment, all four of you feel a force tugging at your arms and legs as spectral tentacles begin to grab at each of you. And I will need initiative from the party as this haunt manifests in a surprise round. Kind of stinks that Warren doesn't have channel or er, yeah, channel positive energy anymore. <laughs> so Jessup with a 28. Gideon with a 17, Kieran with a 17, and so I'll put Kieran at 18, Gideon at 17, Jessup at 28, and Oren at 13. Okay. So in the surprise round at initiative count 10, this haunt triggers and goes off. So the spectral tentacles function basically like a black tentacles spell and it will attempt to grab each of you in the area during this surprise round. So that is a 33 CMB against all of your CMDs. Yep. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh that's yeah. So all four of you will end up taking 10 points of damage. Does it have to roll against my mirror image though? No. Really? Because it's an area effect. It gets everything in the area. But again, it's an attack roll. So I feel like it should. Yeah, this is also a supernatural effect. It's not really a sight based. Yeah, but what people are arguing is that it's a, it's an attack roll. So it follows the attack roll thing for mirror images. But I will leave that up to you. If you don't want it to happen, then... I guess so. It just seems weird because it is a haunt, so it's not like it is looking for you. But how many images are there? Seven. Sorry, there's a lot of discussion back and forth. I rolled a one, so it doesn't matter. Okay. So I rolled a one on the D8, so it gets you even with the mirror images. And that is in the chat. That is not a fudge troll. You can see it there. (laughs) It's right there. You can look at it. So you all take 10 points of damage and are grappled by this spell. It is now the first round of combat. The haunts go on a specific initiative count. So we will go down the down the line. So Jessup, you are up. Is there anything you can do? You are grappled by this spectral black tentacle type haunt. I don't think so. Because I'm grappled, so I can't cast a spell or I do, but it's something weird. I can't remember. You are grappled, so you'd have to make a concentration check to cast a spell. You can also attempt to break out if you would like. It functions like the Black Tentacles spell. So so what do I have to get for the concentration check? It is 10 plus the grappler's CMB plus the spell level. So you don't know how good the CMB of this thing is, but it did hit a 33. So uh, it would be a pretty high DC probably. And then what do, what do I need if I want to try to break free? Uh, if you break free, you can do an escape artist or a CMB check. And the DC of that is uh, the CMD of Black Tentacles for the purposes of escaping the grapple is 
10 plus its CMB. I guess I could try Escape Artist. Yeah, both of those checks would be pretty tricky, but uh, you can try one or the other. Yeah, we'll try. We'll try uh, Escape Artist first, I guess. 19. I'm guessing no wood. So that will fail. So you are unable to, to break out. If there's nothing else, then we will move over to Kieran. I don't really have any option because it's only Escape Artist, right? You can do an Escape Artist check, a CMB check, or you can try to cast defensively. And by defensively, I don't mean that. I just mean concentration check. There's only one, there's one other thing I could do, Jason, but... Okay. The only thing I could do is spend a swift action to start Inspire Competence for Escape Artist checks. Okay. So I'm not sure how much that's going to help you guys, but I believe that is going to be a plus five to Escape Artist checks for you, Yahoo's. Yeah, you can um, mark off a round of performance and everybody will get a plus five on escape artist checks. Okay, so it's my turn and even with the plus five, my CMB is still better. So I'm going to roll a CMB to try to get out. 28. 28 will not be enough. Oh, because we're rolling against CMB, CMD? Yes. And it's escape artist against CMD also, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. I can't, yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. I'll have a different thing to do next round. Okay. Uh, Gideon, anything? Can I get a knowledge check? I mean, I'm pretty sure you use the word haunt. I'm assuming it is a proper haunt. Uh, go ahead and do a knowledge religion. DC, yeah. Okay. So 21. Uh, yeah. You're looking around and you sense that this is like it's not a spell, it's not a creature. These things are not actually here. It is. It does appear to be a haunt player knowledge. I don't have holy water. I don't have positive energy. Is there anything else that Gideon would know to maybe do? Now, the best ways of dealing with haunts are doing enough positive energy via channels to destroy them, but that is difficult to do because they tend to appear before you know it, and a lot of the times they tend to have more health than a channel can really deal with right away. Right, and so getting away is more more often the choice, right? So let's try that. We'll try our escape artist. And by escape artist, it'll be a CMB check. 17's not going to be enough. Bottom of the round, Orin, it is your turn. We're grappled, right? Yes, you are grappled. Nope. Nope, you are unable to break free. All right, on initiative count 10... The haunt goes again. Uh, By the way, could I have started uh, Invocation? I was just looking for one that might be useful. I guess so, yeah. Yeah, we'll try um, Purify just to help saving throws. Yeah, you can start that up. For those of you who are still grappled, which is all of you, you see that all of your visions see the same thing, but what I'm about to describe, there are not four iterations of it. It's just that each of you are only seeing this from your own perspective. So the hooded hobgoblin woman darts behind you and with a long blade begins to make towards stabbing you in the back. But before that, you each hear the harsh female voice whisper in your ears in goblin. So if you don't understand, if you don't speak goblin, then you don't know what it's what the voice is saying. If you do, then you know what it's saying. But in goblin, it says thus always to traitors and then you feel a sharp pain in your back and chest and each of you look down and you see an ethereal blade impaling you from behind all of you take 30 points of damage is that a sneak attack it's not because it's a haunt it if this is just 8d6 piercing damage i mean if it was the actual creature it might have been sneak attack so i take 45 though still yes so yeah, Orin would take 15, uh, Gideon would take 45. All right, uh, next round, Jessup, anything going on? I'm still just grappled, right? Not pinned or anything? You are, you're just grappled. Okay, I guess I will attempt to cast a spell with a concentration check. Okay, go for it. Ugh, 27. 27 is not going to be enough. So do I lose the spell that I tried to cast too? I believe that is the case. Okay, All right, I checked it off. That's good, that's good. Doing good. Great, great, great. Love it. Next up is Karen. Yeah, I mean, 
These are like ethereal tentacles. They're not actual real. Yeah, they tentacles. are not corporeal. It's a haunt. Yeah, see, I just don't think there's any way that I can. I'll I'll try it. I'll try to cast a spell, but I don't think there's any way I can pass a concentration. But I'll try it once just to say that I did. Um, so this is going to be, I think, combat casting. I don't know if that applies to grappled. Yeah, well, casting on the defensive or grappled. So there will be a plus four to this roll. 29. So 28, sorry, 28. 28 will not be enough. Yeah, so I literally have nothing to do, so... You can just slowly okay. drain the life force from my body. That brings us to Gideon. Is it a standard action to try to break free? Yes. We'll try again. 24. 24 will not pass. That brings us to Oren. I don't know. I guess I'll try and break free as well. Okay. Nothing happened. Oh, there it goes. In 11, will not succeed. Oh, boy. We're going to die. Yeah, natural 20 succeeds. A couple things I will note, because this is a kind of an obscure thing that you might not have uh, realized. So, Brandon, Inspire Courage would actually boost CMB checks, I think, because they are technically attack rolls. Am I wrong in that? I might be. I'm just assuming. I Like, if you were trying to boost that, then you could do Inspire Courage instead of Inspire Competence, and it might actually be better that way. I have it programmed as CMB for what it's worth. So that's just that's up to you. I just wanted to make sure that you were aware because it it probably does not say that in the ability text, but uh, elsewhere it says anything that boosts attack rolls also goes to CMBs. Usually. I don't think it's possible for Jessup to break out. So if I'm well, a natural die, twenty will always work. Me. So it is possible, but yeah, I was just letting you know. And inspired courage would boost CMB though. That's true. So yeah, at the bottom of the round, you all continue to take damage as this blade is still pierced into you. You will all take another 11 points of damage. So Oren will take six and Gideon will take 16, uh, which brings us to the top of round three. And we're back up to Jessup. Guys, I have an idea. I'm going to spy a courage. <laughs> sure. And then why not? Let's see. Let me, let me ro- roll this rockin' CMB. Bet you I got close. 24 will not be enough. That'll bring us to Karen. Well, I guess I'll just try to break free with the CMB. Also a 24. Uh, That is not enough for Kieran either. Uh, Gideon? I'm going to swift action do my last divine touch for the day. Okay. And I will attempt to break free. A 33. You exactly managed to break out of these tentacles. Wow. Gideon, you are there and you are struggling and you hit yourself with uh, some divine energy and that actually seems to almost momentarily give you enough space from this aura of uh, the haunt to quickly get out of the way. So that you technically have a move action left. Yeah, I just want to make sure four is what it is for Inspire Courage, four competence to CMB. I believe so. Correct. And he will... Where, where Can I have some visual representation of this? I want to get away, but I don't know where to go. So it's the whole room? Uh, if that gives you a visual representation? <laughs> yeah, that the whole room is black tentacles? As far as you can see. Can you, can you help pull someone off of a grapple? Is that a thing that you can do? You can attempt to aid, but you don't have the action to do that. Right. So he's just going to try to get away from now for now okay that brings us to Oren. you see gideon gets free and abandons you all yep 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 he's going to pick up the weapons left in the other room i would have gone the other way i guess i'll try and break free okay don't forget your inspire courage it's not programming it so it'll be plus two to this plus four plus four it's not gonna matter okay doing great you're not able to break free so yep At the end of this round, the haunt will go again. So Gideon, you are kind of looking down. You're waiting for the tentacles to re-grapple you. Yep, he knows. And they don't. 
Oh. It seems that after you broke free, it's almost like you are, you've broken free of the haunt itself. Gotcha. So you're fine, but the rest of you will take 14. So actually, Gideon, you'd still take seven damage because of Oren, but. I understand. I had to roll a natural 17 you know, to break free. That's yeah. so ridiculous. Really high. But you are now free and, and unhindered, so you can, you have more options now when it comes back to your turn, but top of the next round we're back up to jessup anything uh... jason real quick do immediate actions require a concentration immediate action spells yeah you do not need to cast defensively but you do need to do concentration checks i'm gonna try to cast a spell with an immediate action so okay. i'll roll concentration so plus four to this 28 is gonna fail so i tried 28 is going to fail going back to jessup jessup will drop performance it'll linger and just Roll another CMB. Okay. My four is included. Nope. It's not going to do it. Nope. Brings us to Kieran. I will try a CMB, I guess. Yeah, you guys now know what the DC is. So, I mean, a natural 20 will obviously... 27 failed. Uh, and that's with the four. Yep. Okay. Gideon, it is your turn. You are free to do what you want. There, there, it's got to be positive energy to deal damage to a haunt, and that's not going to help. So I'm just going to try to aid Orin's attempt to escape and just try to like pull him free. So yeah, you can you can roll to aid. You just have to hit a ten. Do you automatically hit a ten? I've got to roll what a CMB check to see if I help to him. Aid. Or... Yeah, you just yeah. have to hit a ten. So I have a you probably sixteen. Auto. I auto. So that brings us to Orin's turn. Orin, you get an other, another plus two on this. So with the Inspired Courage and the plus two, this is six higher than whatever you roll. <laughs> okay. 28. 28 is not going to be enough. The end of the round, the three of you who are still grappled take another nine. So Orin, you take five. Gideon, you take four. And again, let's we can probably rapid fire through this a little bit. Jessup, what are you doing? I want to try my thing again. Oh, you're doing it again? Okay, go ahead. All right, so plus four... No. Okay. Uh, All right. Jessup's thing is going to linger, so he would just uh, roll it. Wow. <laughs> wow. I don't know. Wow. <laughs> that is the worst roll I think I've had. That brings us to Karen. Okay. Uh, CMB 23. Not enough. Gideon, anything? Uh, no, all my stuff that would help are sacred bonuses. That Those will stack? Yeah, those will stack. If you have something that boosts attack rolls, it would boost CMBs. Yeah, so that's what I'm thinking about doing. We'll switch my invocation to... I think justice would be the plus two. I think it's the justice, yes, to justice. So that'll add plus two to the check. So everybody gets another plus two. And then we're going to try to aid here in by five foot step over. Okay. Yep, so you switch your invocation so everybody gets another plus two sacred bonus to their CMB checks, and you're going to aid Kirin this time. Okay. That brings us to Orin. Orin, go ahead and roll. You'll still get plus six from the sacred bonus and the competence, but not from the aid, so. So what's the concentration check that has to be made in order to cast a spell? Ten plus the CMB plus the spell level. It's a higher DC <laughs> than the uh, Yeah, that ain't gonna happen. All right. Nope. 21. That's not going to be enough. Top of the next round, we come to Jessup. Kieran, are you doing your thing again? Are you going to want us to take our damage first? or? Oh, yes. <laughs> you shut your mouth, Jessup. <laughs> oh, nice. So Orin and Gideon take eight. The rest of you take 16. I'm not going to do it this round. I'm out of first level spells, and I don't want to upcast it just yet. So that brings us to Jessup. Um, you all see him go limp. After Jessup, we go to Kieran. So I get a plus two to this, right? Cause yeah, because he's aiding you and you get his, invoca uh, his uh, invocation. So it's another four to what it was before. Well, I have that in, I have that program. So don't uh, add that in because so yeah, think... it would be two more because of the aid. Wow. Uh, with a two, it's only a 30. <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> what does that roll on the die? Uh, that's an 11. That's my first double digit roll. Right. It should be possible. Yeah, you only have to roll a 14 have, or higher. I have, with your aid, I have a plus 21. Yeah. So it, I need to literally roll just, like, one good number. And then Dimension Door's out of here! Uh, Gideon, your turn. Jessup is limp and unconscious. Yeah, you see him, like, his head lulls back, and he seems to stop resisting. 
let's hit him with the old cure critical. Okay. 40. Wow. That was a high roll. Wow. <laughs> nice. Beefy. Is Inspired Courage helping that when it shouldn't? I don't think so because it's no, heal. that's correct. Yeah, it's just beefy. It's seven, eight, four, nice. eight. So Jessup comes back to consciousness. He comes back up and just immediately picks up where he left off and his inspiring. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> just blacked out momentarily. Yeah. He, he wakes up just back into a, a performance. Like, yeah, that's wakes just, up performing. That's just a bad night at the bar, Jessup. Yeah. Brings us to Orin. You get another chance. Okay. Wait, so what's the concentration check? 10 plus... 10 plus the CMB, CMB. plus the spell level. So, that's so it's, it's, higher than, it's, it's higher than the thing to... to so it's like a 44 break. to cast a level 1 spell. No. Be no, because we're rolling good CMD, which is 33. CMB is likely lower. Oh, okay. It's still going to be high, but it's not 33. Out of game, it would be 34 for a first level spell. That's still kind of high. <laughs> All right. 34 is high. No, nope. It's pretty high still. Nope, nope, nope. Comment maneuver 14, not enough. End of that round. Another 14, so 7, seven to Orin and Gideon. 14 to the other two. Back up to the top round. Jessup, you are conscious. You can act this time. Jason, quick question. If I were to upcast a level 1 spell to level 2, it would be like DC 35. It would be the spell level that I'm casting it at. So here's the thing. Tell me if I'm wrong with my understanding here. You can use a higher level spell slot. It does not increase the caster level of like the, the spell, right? So like if you were to cast fireball as like a as like a ninth level spell, you don't get extra stuff out of the fireball. It's still just a fireball. I think you're just reducing the spell slot down to that spell's yes. level. So I think you're fine. All right. Well, I'll try it. What's the harm in trying? Thirty-eight. Oh, you're out. You're oh. out. Well, no, that's no. a spell. I'm casting a oh. spell on Jessup. Liberating command, you will get a plus 20 to an escape artist check. So he can do this as an immediate action. Yes. So as an immediate action, he can attempt an escape artist check with a plus 20 bonus. Okay. Yes. No so pressure. Can we say I, I, all right, so I did not inspire courage yet. Correct. This is on Kieran's turn. No, no, no. This is on Jessup's turn. Because okay, it's an immediate on, action. This is on your turn, but the immediate action is before you're getting to do stuff, yes. So I will just add plus 20 to my escape artist check. 40. Hey, hey. You're free. You break free from the tentacles, and you still have a move action and a swift action. And a standard. Uh, no, that was a standard. Uh, no, that was his immediate. That's right. Yeah, the check was the immediate. Yeah, so you have a full turn, actually. Go ahead. So Jessup will turn and... <gasps> Karen! Thank you. And so he will swift action. Nope, or no, can't use your swift. Because I can't, right. So I, I will move action, start Inspire Courage. There you go. Okay. And then I will standard action, aid Kieran. Okay. And do you auto aid if they hit 10? Oh, I have a 14 CMB, right? So I auto. Okay, so yeah, so yeah, you aid. And that goes to Kieran. So Kieran, you now have Courage. You have the invocation. Uh, you only have the one aid. Right. So, so just a plus, plus two eight? again to this. So, okay, it's plus two because you have the invocation and, and, yes. and inspire or programmed in. So yeah, plus two to whatever you roll. Wow. Natural five. You're going to have to roll more than that, though. I am trying to, but at least I <laughs> pulled that spell off. That's all I cared about. Uh, that brings us to Gideon. Two of you are free. Yeah, he's going to, I'm sorry, dismiss <laughs> Shield Other. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, as a full standard action. And then that's it. Okay. Oren, you can make another roll. Mm. Natural 20 will do it. Guess he does falter. Mm. Yeah, well. Nah, that's all right. You've been pushing my luck quite a bit today. <laughs> 26 is not enough. So question, Jason, looking yes. at this. Where's the minus two coming from? Because I'm grappled. Because you're grappled. That would not be applying when you're trying to escape. But none of you have rolled within two, so I haven't really bothered oh, mentioning Oh, okay. That. I just wanted to make sure you were taking that into account. I just uh, yeah, that. None of you rolled within two, so I didn't bother. Uh, so yeah, at the bottom of that round, the two of you who are still grappled take another 12. This is no longer split, so you both oh. actually take mm. 12. Ow. Mm. You see Oren permanently die. Yep. yep. Oh, boy. 
because yep. he didn't have the half. Yep, I yep. fall over dead. Immediately dies. <laughs> is your con like an eight? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Did you dump con as a cleric? That is a terrible don't, choice. Don't worry don't about it. No, why? Gideon just took twelve damage. <laughs> oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> Uh-huh. He's like, I dismissed shield other, and now I'm going to take all of Orin's damage. <laughs> Flame <the> damage. <laughs> yeah. So the top of round round eight, uh, Jessup, you are free to do what you want. Jessup will cast a spell. Oh, I'm an idiot. So it's I could have just rolled. I, sh- I could have just cast freedom of movement. Yeah, I thought you could, but I, you know, I don't. Don't ask. Don't. I. Sorry. I don't know. I thought you might have been out of space or something. Can I can I meta game for a second? How dare you even ask me that? I'm Kier- offended. Kieran would suggest, with all this going on, that you cast that on Orin. I don't know if you were planning on a casting on a Kieran, but he would suggest cast it on Orin. But it's up to you. But he would say, Jessup, cast it on on Orin. Uh, if I might meta game a little bit, uh, Jessup, you would also know that Kieran has mirror images and it's a touch spell. Oh, yep. I completely forgot about that garbage. Yep. <laughs> well, Kieran doesn't have the little displacement icon. I, I never know. Sorry, I have my I, I keep track of my images as like a health bar, but I can't. You know, you guys. No, no. Clearly, that. clearly, this is Orin's evil origin story because <laughs> Gideon has abandoned him. <laughs> Jessup has abandoned him. I was right next. To- <laughs> clearly, this is how Orin becomes evil. It's fine. I, it's I'm totally giving fine. you. I'm giving you a plus four bonus. It's not my fault. You're rolling like garbage. Okay, so Jessup will five for step over. No, 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 no. <laughs> you know what? Jessup just leaves. <laughs> Walks out. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Jessup casts haste. Oh, there you go. Perfect. That's it. Yeah, That's perfect. exactly what I need. Perfect. That would okay. give us a plus one to our attack roll, though. That's technically true. <laughs> right. Jessup casts freedom movement on Orn. Okay. That brings us to Kieran. Anything? Okay, I'm going to try to roll a CMB. A 25. <laughs> 27, technically. I mean, yeah, but now all three of you can just start tugging at. <laughs> yeah. This, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Uh, Gideon, it's your turn. Moving aid. Five foot seven, Nick, eight. Moving up and aiding. All right. Oren, your turn. You are free. I mean, since don't, because we're rolling an attack roll to help, don't, don't we have to roll for images too? For aiding? Uh, don't wait. You don't. Nope. You're saying that very confidently. I'm very Actually, confident. You probably about do. That. No, you don't, because you're not hitting him. You're helping. No, him. you gotta touch wait, him. Wait, you're, you're touching him. Oh, it's just, are you flavor aiding? You're, you're aiding? touching me to help aid. What? No. Yeah, they're trying to pull we're you grabbing out. you. Yeah. No, we're grabbing the the tentacle. Yeah. That's grabbing him. The yeah. incorporeal tentacle. The tentacle. You're grabbing that. Okay. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it was grabbing me technically. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, kind yeah. of. You tried aiding how many times on him? And they never worked. No, yeah, no. What I'm saying is that... <laughs> what I'm saying is we can backtrack it and get rid of some images. Ah, uh, I see what you're I mean, saying. I could just use my standard to dismiss the spell. <laughs> I don't... I, it, it, yeah, it, it's one of those ones that... Yeah. I'll just use my next turn to dismiss the mirror images. Oh, wait, can I even do that? Do you have to make a concentration check to dismiss the spell? I don't think so. <laughs> but I mean, if they all tried to aid by the time it got back to your turn, you'd probably be out of images anyways. Because I think he tried to aid you twice. If they all did it now, it would be another three times. So you'd have like maybe two. And images. Jessup tried to. Well, I think it's been three times because I think Gideon did it twice and Jessup did it once. Yeah. So what we could say is we could just skip this round. Say that all your images have gone away. Take some more damage and then do it again. Take some more damage. And then you can make one more check with all of the aids. I could just cast freedom of movement one more time. Oh, yeah, that's true. So you would take a little bit of damage and then he could cast freedom of movement on you immediately after the other two have gone rid of the images. Am I am I horrible for, like, wanting to just do it on my own? Like, I've rolled so many bad rolls. I have a plus 19. It's like... It's not horrible. It's just, do you want to pay a health tax or a spell tax? It's your choice. I'm. I mean, I'm paying a health tax anyway. It's well, a health tax is a spell tax. Yeah, they're the same thing with different currency. So you, you take the 15 damage, um, and at the top of the next round, it would be Jessup. So Jessup, you can, if you want to do freedom, of movement, you can do freedom of movement. Images are gone now, right? 
Yeah, at, th- at this point, like, there's been enough attempts that you could even ready and have them do two more, and then it would get rid of them. That's true. So that's my last level four spell, freedom of movement. And, uh, Kieran, go ahead and roll me one more CMB just to see if you would have done this right. <laughs> 30. <laughs> yes. You would have, you would have, too. You would have just barely, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. gosh. You, you actually would have, too. Uh, that's, that's awesome. I love it. So. <laughs> After about a minute of struggling in these tentacles, taking immense amounts of damage every round, you all finally break free, and as you do, you see the tentacles disappear, and the three figures, again, their battle has coming to an end as the hobgoblin woman stabs the Medusa in the back, pulls the sword out, and you see the Medusa collapse onto the ground as the other two turn and begin to walk away, or slither away in the case of the Naga, and then... As time goes by, you see the Medusa's body begin to crawl towards the door to the north. And then everything disappears. All the, the haunt disappears. And you're left in this room now. Oh, that sucked. Kieran that sucked. is bleeding from his eyeballs right now. <laughs> That's not healthy either. I'll be real honest with you all. That sucked. I'm out of resources, basically. Yeah, it's like I planned on continuing on. But at this point, it's like... We probably should just rest. <laughs> the door kicks over. The Medusa comes out. What's all this going on out here? <laughs> Look at how much of the map you have. There's like maybe two rooms left. <laughs> right. Like the, I really want to see this and then I want to be done. But I'm worried that if I go here. We can always just dimension door out. <laughs> I've got teleport. I've got dimension door. We could we could teleport back to Kragadan probably. We just need to stick as a cohesive unit as we walk. <laughs> yeah, let's look at healing options that exist. Uh, like right this second healing options? It, yeah. Cause oh, I'm interesting. Assuming you'd, like some, you'd like some healing options? I No, I have some. I just want to use party resources as efficiently as possible. I'm thinking about using my invocations for you um, guys to get fast healing. I'm down have, 124, so... Uh, so let's do... <laughs> <laughs> I'm at 22 <laughs> hit points. <laughs> let's... Well, I, I, yeah, that's a lot. So, yeah, let's, I was do, let's, negative two. let's use an invocation of, of fast healing there. Uh, healing. Uh, spurs the Endurer's allies to seek justice, gaining. Nope, that's justice. Wait a minute. Radiance. <laughs> <laughs> Kieran just sprints down the hallway. Justice! <laughs> oh, man. Gideon is all mixed up on what's going on here. Uh, um, okay, so it's fast healing one per three levels. So you have how many levels of Omdura? I have... It starts at one and then it takes up. Yeah, so but do you have six? I have at least six. I have seven. Okay, so it would be fast healing three yep. for... It lasts for one minute. Yeah. So that would be 30 hit points per use that you wanted to use. I might as well use them up and give everyone 90 hit points. Okay. Does that... Is anyone... Is that a waste on anyone? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, if anybody doesn't want theirs, I will take theirs. Okay? You can just pass okay, those off you to can't, me. You can't complain that you wanted to make you in a tank and then when you lose HP. I was tr- I was prepared, but yet again, when I prepare to get hit with mirror images, there's some shenanigans out there that just don't even work against images. So it's like, why do I even bother? And then when I don't bother, then it's like, oh, this enemy just hits you with a stick. If you had images, <laughs> you would have you would have missed out on seven hits right now. And it's like, I can't win. I seriously can't win. I mean, you're not wrong. It's, it's not. It's, it's. I'm not. I'm not disagreeing with you. <laughs> Yeah, but it's it's almost like the writers of this uh, AP wanted to do something about one of the most staple spells, and just said <sighs> no, it doesn't work anymore. I my my only worry is that if we go back into this room, we'll have to suffer the haunt again. So hopefully that's not reality. Well, I'll just DD us out of here, and then yeah. if we come back, maybe Orin can have a channel energy, channel positive energy, or something to just dismiss it. I would say with your religion check, uh, Gideon, you know that haunts are very similar to traps in that they do have things like triggers, they have things like resets. You don't know what that is. Could be an hour, could be a day, could be a week. I know that they can also be once and done, just like traps. They're, that is also like- true, yes. Is the consensus that we want to check out that last room? Yes. No. Oh. Kieran oh. wants to. I want to. Kieran will go with you. Kieran will scout out if you want. 
He can cast invisibility and fly. So we're going through the main gate up here? No. 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 The one that has a fog wall? No, no, no. We don't do the fog walls that's, yet. That's, listen, that's a boss. <laughs> that's a boss room, Jessup. You explore all around the fog wall, and then you do the fog wall <laughs> when you got full Estus. Okay, we don't have full Estus. What, what if we just? What if we just diplomatize with the Medusa that uh, we're we're here to kill Zenithura as well, and that haunt really sucked. Yeah, that's <laughs> fair. I mean, I'm sure that'll work. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, Jessup, you go do that while we look down this hallway and tell us how well, to I mean, I want, I want emotional backup. I, I mean, Gideon will go with you. Backup. No, 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 no. Uh, Gideon, Gideon's done right. following Jessup. We Bulls move in lockstep, five feet at a time. <laughs> I, five feet at a time, lockstep. <laughs> yeah, you guys Marching move forward. Order. Military campaigns okay. coming back. We've said this before, but like. At the end of this AP, these characters are going to have some serious emotional damage. Oh, yeah. The emotional damage. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I don't like this little room. I don't want to do it, but I do. Oh. I do. I, 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 just, I just feel like, oh, TPK? Great. So get a, bring it a backup. <laughs> I, I've already been thinking about a backup. No problem, right? No sweat. Yeah, exactly. Zero Except sweat. I really don't want Kieran to die without stuff happening. I, so, like, yeah. <laughs> he's going to... I like. Huh. I like Gideon, but all of his stuff is is much later than right now. So he just needs to survive. From where you guys are right now, you can see another plaque hanging above the hallway that kind of curves to the left here. Written in Dwarven. Says, Solemn silence is to be respected within for the focus and safety of all. And as you round this corner, you look in you see sturdy bronze bookshelves line the outer walls of this octagonal chamber. A simple lectern sits near the western wall, bearing an open tome. Silently approach, not saying anything. Okay. Gideon and Orin, you guys are wearing medium or heavy armor, right? Yeah. Yeah. Give me a stealth check. <laughs> oh, oh boy. Power word kill. Power it's word not even, kill. It's not even worth asking me. I'm a oh, negative four. I rolled a 12. <laughs> oh my gosh. I rolled a nat one. I rolled a nat one and got a negative three. So as the two of you enter the room, the clanking of your armor suddenly within the silence of this room, you hear it begin to like echo off of some of these bronze bookshelves. And a voice shouts out deafeningly loud. Shh, quiet in the library. It says, silence. And both of you take 26 points of sonic damage. And you are both deafened for nine rounds. Uh, actually, sorry. Give me a fortitude save. You can reduce this by a bit. Oh, wow. Okay, so you both take 13 points of sonic damage and are deafened for five rounds. You couldn't roll a natural 20 in your stealth. <laughs> Wow. Could have rolled a natural 20 on your escape artist check. Okay. I know. Okay. Okay. All right, guys. 60. Reel it in. Reel it in. Oh, I'm feeling feisty. <laughs> yeah, I, could, I could tell. I could tell. Ever since that, I think that you got to like, you, you, you embrace like defeatism, and so now you're just over it. Like, yeah, let's just keep going. See what happens. Oh, look, we're dying some more. Oh, boy. <laughs> Surprise there. All right. So yeah, you are both hit by this this shout uh, and you take some damage and you're deafened for a, a little bit. Um, Kieran, you seem fine for now, but you also have not entered the room. Kieran's going to run out here down the hallway. He's going to cast fly and then he's going to fly back up here. So now he's not touching the ground. He's just flying. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. And then he will fly silently because he does not wear armor and while they're kind of like standing there deaf and he's gonna like peek over see what's on this lectern we're not blind okay. we're deafened I yeah <laughs> Gideon's staying perfectly still but now you have to imagine you're probably like a, like a flashbang you got that ringing nope. in your ears nope uh, didn't, didn't feel it at all no mm. Gideon he doesn't falter he takes pain like a man and just stands there <laughs> nope I think he complains about it every time yep. yeah he does <laughs> uh, Jessup, are you doing anything, or are you just waiting out there? 
I ain't going in there. Oh, just <laughs> oh, going going in there. Going on. <laughs> he didn't want to. He didn't really want to go. He's going for emotional support. Yeah. I ain't going in there. <laughs> so, you guys are in this room, and you're looking around. These bookshelves are lined with books, tons of books. A very quick glance at like the titles on the spines tells you that the vast majority of them are focused on lore pertaining to ancient dwarven society and spiritualism. It looks like a bunch of them probably detail stuff like different elementals or outsiders or methods that the, the dwarves have dealt with. There's a few that almost that you see almost seem to indicate like maybe maybe details about Fae as well. Um, but a lot of lore in here. As far as the lectern itself, you see sitting on the lectern is an ancient dwarven text that if you just briefly look at some of the, the, the open page, it looks like it's mostly about arcane theory. It does look like there's a couple scrolls that are tucked into different pages, though. Kieran says nothing. And he will perceive around the room. Okay. Are you, like, looking at the books or just, like, looking for traps? Like, are you reading the books? Well, with a natural two, he's just looking at his hands right now. And okay. then he will just leave because he doesn't see anything. Okay. Good. Gideon will take a look around, and I'm assuming the book is written in Dwarven, so he doesn't know what's being said there. Yeah, all of these books are written in Dwarven. So any anyone who is interested in reading about the lore in this library pretty much needs to speak Dwarven in order to get anything out of it. As he takes his surroundings, and uh, he'll, he'll move his head a little bit, but he's going to try to not clank the armor as much as okay. possible. So yeah, looking around again, you see a plethora of books that are old. They're well kept, but they're all very old. And like you get the sense that there is a wealth of information in this room, but as you I think don't speak Dwarven, is that true? No, I don't. You're not sure how relevant the information is or how modern like modernly applicable it is. Even if you were to take a book off and start reading it, you wouldn't get very far. But there are plenty of books in here, and again, the book on the lectern you can't make out what it's saying, but it does look like there are scrolls that are like tucked into some of the pages. But otherwise, you don't see anything else in this room. It's just, it seems to be like a library. Gideon will quietly gesture to Orin to kind of like, let's get out of here and deal with it later. And will turn around and try to quietly tiptoe his way out. Okay. <laughs> Roll a stealth check as you try to leave. Yeah, sure. Ten. Okay, so again, the voice shouts out and says, I said silence! in a deafeningly loud voice. So give me a fortitude save. Okay, you take 10 points of damage and you're deafened for six rounds. I didn't hear him shout it again. I just felt the damage. Orin, are you doing anything else in there? So he couldn't read what was the book on the I lectern? Can't. He, he could, could not because he does not speak Dwarven. So he couldn't read what any of the books said. Kieran just looked at the book on the lectern and he determined that it was about like arcane theory and that there were scrolls inside. And he briefly determined that the like the general contents of the books in this library. Uh, but that that's it so far. Okay. I'll give it a look around, see if I notice anything that seems relevant offhand in the titles. Not moving, just, just kind of looking around. Again, yeah, you see this chamber, it seems to house a plethora of lore pertaining to ancient Dwarven society and spiritualism. So you know that looking at the different titles, like there are some that's like, like Denizens of the Plane of Earth, volume one through 27, right? And it's like, you think that this probably details thousands of spirits, anything from lowly methods to elementals to powerful, maybe even fey lords. Um, there's a great deal of information there. You know that this would be like a boon to dwarven society having all of this information preserved. Without like doing actual in-depth research, you don't know if any of this information is immediately applicable or beneficial to you, but th that's the general sense that you get looking around at these titles. Okay, and the thing on the lectern's arcane? Yeah, it's, it seems to be about arcane theory, and other than that, it, there's a couple scrolls that are tucked in there, but that's about it. All right, they'll walk out as well. Okay, give me a stealth check as you try to leave. Yep. Yep. Oh, boy. Seven. Yeah, so same thing happens to you. Oh, boy. Give me a fortitude save to reduce that. Wow. Okay, you take 16 damage. Wow, you, you guys roll in a bunch of natural 20s now that you're not grappled. Yeah, it's great. It's great. It's two in a row. Fantastic. Yeah. Wonderful. And you're deafened for three rounds. So, And that seems to be it with that room. And now we rest. 
Yes. Oh, wait, you don't want to keep going? You Might wanna, as well, right? You don't want to go into the big... There's only one room left. Yeah. Okay. This one. Right here. Yeah, okay. I'll, metagame. One room left. That's it. Guys, we can finish the book tonight. Let's go. We almost died to the haunt of the Medusa. Let alone... I, I do have my level five spell left still. So with yeah. that is Let's my only this. spell left. Nope, two level twos and a level one. I mean, if you guys want, Kieran can just dimension door us back to the statue room. Yeah, that's fine. This statue room up here? Nope. No. The Gug statue? The brother statue. So do you want a dimension door over there then? Yes. Yeah. I think that's. I think you have plenty of range. Oh, yeah. If it's not, I'll teleport. You've got plenty of range. That's like 400 feet that you can do with dimension door. So. Yeah. Kieran dimension doors all of you back to the beginning of the map and everything resets Dark Souls style. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'll just dimension doors to the fog wall and we'll go in real fast. That's what I used to do with Ornstein and Smo. Yeah, just run <laughs> past the east. Yeah. So yeah, you guys are in this room. Uh, you see the statue here without its legs, but you have the legs and you feel that you have pretty much cleared this place out except for whatever is in that final room. You don't know exactly what's in there. You got a pretty good suspicion, like Medusa, right? But you don't know if that's it. You don't know much else, to be honest. Is the plan that you guys are just going to rest here real quick? Or what all are you doing? Well, I mean, we're going to take a full rest. It's not going to be a real quick rest, but... Yeah, like a 10-minute like a nap? No, yeah. no, 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 yeah, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nope, just it's going to be... Just long enough to catch my breath. Nope. Karen is... Like, that's like the third time that Kieran's gone down to super low hit points. So he just, he wants to take the night to just think over things. So I think we should just bring the statue back and leave. We cleared out the gugs, I'm sure. I'm sure there's no more gugs in there. We should go talk to the dwarf lady, see if she'll let us go. We should tell the dwarves that we cleared this place out, and then they can come in with their paladins and kill the Medusa. That's not a terrible idea. <laughs> Jason would but be like, can't I get out. This is the. Uh, I mean, I can teleport. I don't understand why teleport wouldn't work, but I know as a game master that you wouldn't want that to work because it's going to just ruin everything. I just mean that, like, you were specifically tasked with finding out what happened here, not with clearing yeah. out the enemy. We did find out what happened. The haunt told us that Xanathar and a hobgoblin lady fought this Medusa. Yes, that will convince the dwarves. <laughs> <laughs> no, obviously there's a lot to be done still. But I think that the game plan from here is pretty simple. One of us gets to keep watch spell, and they keep watch. Everyone else enjoys a proper night's rest. And then top of the morning, we go try to kill Medusa. Okay. So yeah, you guys can rest up. And it doesn't matter if you do watches. You feel like this place is pretty cleared out. So it doesn't matter if you do watches or keep watch, whatever you choose to do. But you guys can rest for the night. Nothing harasses you while you're resting. You can wake up the next period of time, whether it's day or night or whatever, who knows. And cast your, your daily morning spells to make sure everything is, is prepared and ready to go so you can move forward. And were you being serious to to bring the statue back now? Or were you not? Was that a joke? Yeah, Kieran probably would not want to do that right now. How would you bring it back? So there's a spell, generally, is how it is used, called uh, Stone to Flesh. Hmm. I believe it's a... I don't think it's a wizard spell. No, it's Magus, oh, it Shaman, spell. Sorcerer, Wizard, Magus, witch. Shaman, Sorcerer, Wizard, But witch, we uh, have Earth. Stone Salve. Uh, yeah. If you still have one of those left over, that works. I do have one of those that I've been hanging on to, but I don't think we should use that here because if we fight a Medusa and somebody gets stoned in there. Correct. So the, so you guys are going to dimension door to the library or straight to the main door? To the, the library. <laughs> okay, like, I'm getting, I'm getting no, mixed signals. I just wanted to say to the library. It would actually be to the main door. Okay. Wah, 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 wah. Okay. So you guys uh, dimension door to that door, and I assume you go to open it. Well, hold up. No. I'd like to cast some things. No. No, no. 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 You just immediately open it. I'm going to cast shield. Okay. And I'm going to cast that. Okay. I'm going to cast stone skin communal. Oh, baby. 
and mirror image because why not? It's not like it works okay. anyway. So I got six images and I mean, I might as well also cast, well, I got my mage armor, my fastidiousness. So we have 130 bonus hit points, basically. E- eh. Well, yeah, it's... Track it separately because it's it's goes down at a different rate. So like I'd, I'd like put a, a second bar with like 120 and make sure you increment that by 10 or something because it goes down by 10 rather than just adding 120 hit points. Oh, and it's also it's also 111. Sorry, it's 111 because I'm stunted. 111? 110. 100. There you go. I was thinking of 11. I was going to say, that is a <laughs> weird multiplier. But it, no, uh, it works like temporary hit points, though, basically, doesn't it? No, because it only goes down in increments of 10, because it's DR. Yeah. It's DR ten so it, adamantine. Like if you get hit by fifty hit points, you don't just you, you don't just take fifty hit points off of that. Nice. Like you take ten off that, and then forty of your normal hit points. It's not like protection from energy, which is gotcha. yeah, how that functions. So that's why I'm saying you do it separately. Gotcha. It's DR ten. It's DR ten adamantine for a hundred hundred and ten hit points. Everybody's got spells cast. Yes. Uh, yep. Jessup did good hope with the extend rod. So that'll last. I don't know if we're going to do any mingling and talking, so I figured just extend it out for everybody. Yeah, I imagine all of these spells are pretty much being cast preceding the entrance of this chamber. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm casting another wand of heightened awareness and shield and mage armor and just normal stuff. Mirror image. Hey, Kieran. What? Grand destiny. <laughs> you have a grand destiny. Oh, boy. Am I going to remember to use it? <laughs> oh, I, I, I'm sure there's a little birdie that will remind you. Right. Where can I write that and, so I don't forget? That's your little dragon. <laughs> that's on your shoulder. Oh, yeah. Remind you. My little... You got a grand destiny. My scar. Yes, that guy. So after you cast all of your spells and get ready, you go to push open the door, I assume? Yep. <laughs> Doesn't move. <Okay. laughs> uh, it does not move. I need a strength check. Oh, hey. I rolled an aid. I got bull strength, so I've got a 19 score Gideon for a four modified. Aid. Okay. I will roll a strength check. 18. Okay. With both of you there, one taking the left side, one taking the right side, you are both able to push open the door. And inside, you see four 30 foot wide alcoves mark the corners of this massive chamber. Bronze reliefs decorate each alcove, depicting dwarven figures in exploration, celebration, battle, and mourning. In the center of the chamber, four heavy chains support a circular stone platform a foot above the room's floor. And below is a pit that, from your standpoint, you can't see where that leads. Near the chamber's center stands a statue of a hobgoblin captured in a fearsome roar. The upper half of its face and head have been smashed. And that is where we will pick it up next week.